soon. Okay. So now that we've covered all the weather, Vincent, your voice has changed. J just for your information. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I have a migraine and I'm very tired, so I'll try and stick it out for the whole. You have night, a migraine. I, I didn't know it. you got migraines. Oh, that's awful. Oh yeah. So yeah. I may or may not okay. last. Yeah, I'm Gosh. falling asleep in my chair right now. It's only six thirty here. I don't know if I'm going to make it to eight. I'll try. Okay. All righty, Rue. It's nice to have you guys here with me. Okay, so we got. Where's, so, where's Adrian? So Wendy's going to be trying. <laughs> yeah, so we've got um, Karen, Never. Gail, Romero, Alan, and Kevin is doing bonus tonight. The following week, it's going to be Rob. He's running. I don't know if you're going to run it all, <clears> if I'm still here or not, but you were doing all the categories. And then the following week. What? We, what? <laughs> what, do you mean, what? What? So August the. First, which would be game number 226 uh, i have uh jamie as bonus so we got plenty of time to fill that in but tonight it's karen gail <laughs> romero alan and kevin and you guys all have your permissions already i can do a round on august 1st okay i bring greetings from celia bossworth oh how's she doing this is karen speaking uh, she is now in victoria british columbia after a few days inland she said to say hi to everyone she's driving and you, around right You're and driving. you'll recall that you all offered her uh, handy dandy tips when she asked a few weeks ago oh that's so, wonderful tell her sure. tell her hello from all of us yes hello celia <laughs> i doubt she's watching this video later but you know whatever that's good but Alan, Alan, I see, I don't know, did you see that Carl put a screenshot in the chat for you? Is it only for Carl? It's from Carl to Alan. I see well, something to from Carl to, Alan. to... Yeah, it's pertinent to Alan. Oh, how, showing, oh yeah, showing you can how set the, it up um, to see both. That, that's how I do my trivia on a single monitor. Yeah, me too. And I do a trivia round. I don't know why that's a question, Alan, but like you've not done things like that where you have two windows open with two different things in them at the same time. You're on mute, Alan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rob, I'm why lucky, would he I, I'm if, lucky he if I can turn my computer on and off. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, um, I mean, I have the picture and I have the, so I just don't, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Carl, what did you, what, what did you, um, I, I have two windows next to each other, resized so that they just meet and don't overlap. Well, that's what I kind of thought I was doing here. Uh, I like what I'm doing. As I'm, I'm shrinking, so I'm shrinking you guys. Um, oh, you got no, shrinking. We're getting tiny. <laughs> how do you, how do you open a second window and have it be in front? Well, I don't want. I want it to be next door. I, I like next. <laughs> yeah, uh, but but I but mine always drops to the back, and I don't know I, how to I, have. I'm it. guessing you guys are working with windows that are always maximized. Right. Uh, you, can, you can make your windows the window screen. You can make it minimized, and you can so it becomes. Yeah, well, well, no. What 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 I have I, I I what I'm doing is I am minimizing like that. You know, you have three. You have the full size, the middle size, and then the real, and then basically out of sight. So I have the middle size, and I I was able to get them sort of close together. It wasn't quite as neat okay. as what. Uh, um, I, I I'll get it done. I'll do it one way or the other. We could but send somebody over you. to help you, you know. Well, I'll just go out in the street We're and find this. I'll, I'll find a six-year-old. Someone's going to be able to show me how to do this. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, uh, now I've got functions. a whole shitload of things I can't get rid of. Okay. I need a handy person over here to fix some things around my house. I got a sink that's draining slowly. I have a doorbell. I have lights that aren't working. I need to find myself somebody who can come in and just do some minor stuff i don't want to hire an electrician or anything like that so probably not a good idea to hire an electrician for the sink draining slowly yeah, exactly be yeah it'd be very awkward though we'd probably have figured it out kevin i remember that picture very well please stand by of the uh, test pattern hey puppy i found my tomb working i found out what the problem was what what leaks stupid thing it was a um, conflict with uh, a program that i had running 
Oh. Yeah. So I stopped running the program. Now it, now it works. Okay, let me count you guys and make sure I've got everybody where they should be. Let's put you in room two. Okay, that, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's fine. I can put Deborah there. Okay, there. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Away. I could put him there. Okay. Uh, Janine, what what time does the actual conference start on Saturday? Oh, the uh, skeptical. I'm not sure, but I have that window open. Mm. I can look. Gee, uh, Kevin, couldn't we just sit by? <laughs> Okay, here we go. Open the rooms. I'll begin. Has been hotel. Has been hotel. Oh. Yeah, and, uh, uh, what you um, musical, musical cartoon, but definitely not for kids, not uh, for kids. I must stress this. <laughs> All right, so let's see who we've got here tonight. Uh, we're leaving off with uh, Karen, Ron, Janine, and Jamie. What is your team name tonight? At the rally, an officer yelled, Mickey Mouse. He should have yelled, Donald Duck. Uh, <laughs> that's good. Uh, that and is good. and there, there, are there, were, there were lots of good ones. There's an array by. of other possibilities for your enjoyment in the chat, thanks to Jamie. <laughs> yeah, I'll put some, yeah, during the break, I'll put some up. All right, Gail, Lee, Leonard, and Wendy. <laughs> Group two, no maxi pads on our ears. <laughs> I, I just, I just did not get that. I cannot believe that people are wearing that. It's, it's a, like uh, a cult. It's a test to see yes, what yeah. people will do. How moronic will they behave? Some, <laughs> some of, some of these cultists have been reported to wear diapers on the outside of their clothing. Yes. To support Trump. Yeah, they showed that. Why? So what's a pad on the ear? Nothing. <laughs> All right. Bill, Brandy, Kyle, Faith, Romero, Jim. Three, two, one, sad. <laughs> I sort of get it. Okay. Alan, Cindy, Rob, Vincent. Okay. Um, Chat, I need chat. Peace. Republicans cause a run on, cause a run on band aids. <laughs> I hope I did the band aids. Thing. Yeah, that looks good. Carl, yeah. Kevin, and Peggy. <clears throat> <laughs> Very good. I like that. I like. Oh, that. that's lovely. Can you read that's it for the listeners? Sorry, audience? I didn't realize I was muted. Honey, wake up! You won't believe the dream I just had. I was in this crazy online trivia game for four years. <laughs> you guys get that's a reference to Bob Newhart. The late Bob Newhart. I know. What a what a shame. Thank you for somebody uh, yeah. remembering Bob Newhart. Today. Yes. Oh mm. man. Best se uh, series ending ever. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's the only a lot of people. A lot of people agree with, with you too. I, mm. I thought it was, and a lot of people voted it that way on like online mm. polls and stuff. I don't know if you could yeah. keep that a surprise these days. Oh wow! All right, so here we are. We have five teams that are vying for game number two hundred and twenty-four, <laughs> season five. Team one at the rally, an officer yelled Mickey Mouse. He should have yelled Donald Duck. <laughs> and team two. Yeah. No maxi pads on our ears. Number three. Three, two, one. Sad. Okay. Sad. 
Is that what it says? I think sad. it says one inch sad. Someone say the name, please, of Team Three. No. <laughs> <laughs> team Three, one inch sad. <laughs> Okay. One Are inch. You talking about where the by an is? inch. Yes. Missed Missed him by an oh my inch. God. That's right. My daughter and I had a big long talk about that. Okay. I'm not sure I understand. Uh, missed it by that much. Oh, the yeah. The bullet missed him by an inch. Well, the bullet. Yeah. Missed. Well, I hope we're not condoning any violence here. Absolutely See, the thing is, not. I would rather have him live and lose fair and square. That's I how I am too. Oh, we were just talking about <laughs> measurement. Okay, so and we're not saying what we're calling it in. We do not condone political violence. Absolutely not. No, uh, and no form. Republicans cause a run on band aids. And <laughs> honey, wake up! You won't believe the dream I just had. I was in this crazy online trivia game for four years. <laughs> oh. That's just ridiculous. No one would do that. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Uh, we're leading it off with Karen, followed by Gail, Romero, Alan, and Kevin. Um, this has nothing to do with my category, but I have two Bob Newhart uh, quotations. Uh, one is, I think you should be a child for as long as you can. And then the other is, I'm a minimalist. I like saying the most with the least. <laughs> That's right. Yay. Yay, Bob Newhart. Uh, yeah. The first, yeah, quote, the first quote sounds like something. Uh, it's never too late to have a happy childhood. So <laughs> my, the category, if it's time, I yeah. believe it is. Okay. okay. The category is, the category is mandate for leadership, the conservative promise, commonly referred to as Project 2025 or, for you. The, 20, or the 2025 Presidential Transition Project. Good for you, Karen. Okay. Um, is that a thing? Yes, it is. You will learn a lot. We'll mandate, learn a lot. mandate for leadership. Uh, the conservative promise defines itself as, quote, the conservative movement's unified effort to be ready for the next conservative administration to govern, end quote. Further on, it reads, welcome to the mission. By opening this book, you are now a part of it. Indeed, one set of eyes reading these passages will be those of the 47th president of the United States, and we hope every other reader will join in making the incoming administration a success. Oh. Okay, and here is number one. Uh, okay, I can always, I already see I have a typo here. Trent. Oh, I don't think anybody will care about that. Okay, there you go. All right. Thank you, Vincent. I needed that. I am fallible. <laughs> okay, number one, the project is built on four pillars. Pillar four is the 180-day transition playbook. It says, quote, we are forming agency teams and drafting transition plans to move out upon the president's utterance of blank. There are four Four words there, not four spaces, four words. Fill, in, four fill, in, the, fill in the blank. The underlined spaces equal the number of letters in the answer. And each blank, each line has multiple lines. Some people in your group, someone will be able to determine how many spots there are in each of those. It's a four word phrase. Okay. Which means, that, which means the phrase isn't let's go, Brandon. So then... Um, so then uh, number two, there are five sections in Project 2025, taking the reins of government, the common defense, the general welfare, the economy, and independent blank agencies. Fill in the blank. Number three, how many numbered chapters are in Project 2025? This excludes acknowledgments forward afterwards right the, the numbered chapters is what i'm talking about and that is plus or minus uh plus or minus uh, two all right here we go pornography manifested today this is from this is from the project 2025 i didn't put quotation marks around it i should have Pornography manifested today in the omnipresent propagation of transgender ideology and sexualization of children, for instance, is not a political Gordian knot 
inextricably, inextricably binding up disparate claims about free speech, property rights, sexual liberation, and child welfare. It has no claim to First Amendment protection. Its purveyors are child predators and misogynistic exploiters of women. Their product is an addictive way as an illicit drug and as uh, psychologically destructive as any crime. Pornography should be outlawed. The people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned. Blank and public blank who purvey it should be classed, that's, that's exactly how they wrote it, classed as registered sex offenders. Fill in the blank. The underlined spaces equal the number of letters in the answer. You only have to get one of those words right to get the point. So you're filling in those blanks and the length of the underline has spaces equal to the number of letters in each of those words. And they would be considered registered sex offenders. Who are they talking about? Number five. There's a couple that are long, but most are not this long. Okay. Under the category central personal agency, central uh, personal agency. Now that's, I think that's what it said. Personnel? No. Not I think personnel. It, that might be a typo. But anyway, in, it, it, it should be personnel, I believe. Reductions in force. It reads, quote, four factors determine the order in which employees are protected during layoffs. Tenure, blank preference, blank preference, seniority, and performance in that order of importance. Despite several attempts in the House of Representatives during the Trump years to enact legislation that would modestly increase the, increase the weight given to performance over time of service, the fierce opposition by federal managers, associations, and unions representing long-serving but not necessarily well-performing constituents explains why the bills failed to advance. A determined president should insist that performance be first. So in the current language, what is that What is that word there in the blank? Uh, fill in the blank. Tenure, blank, preference. And you'll notice there is a, a punctuation mark there. Seniority and performance in that order. The, no, the underlying spaces equal the number of letters in the answer. What do they want to eliminate? As Trivia. Preference. Mm -hmm. Number six, when talking about their intention to strip away the Corporation for Public Broadcasting of taxpayer funding, they state this under public interest versus privilege. <laughs> Stripping public funding would, of course, mean that N uh, National Public Radio and Public Broadcasting System, Pacifica Radio, and the other leftist broadcasters would be shorn of the pre presumption that they act in the public interest and receive the privileges that often accompany a company so acting. They have zero claim on an educational function, the original purpose for which they were created by President Johnson. And the percentage of on-air programming that PBS devotes to educational endeavors, such as blank, 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 two words, programs that are themselves biased to the left, is small. Fill in the two blanks. And I purposefully did not make a statement about Wow. Number of spaces. Yeah. I'm getting depressed. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, <laughs> no, no, because this isn't going to be successful, Susan. Oh, uh, no, no. <laughs> this will not be successful. Just the fact that it has a chance, it, a good chance, is so scary. Okay. No, no. It's, but it's, we're getting educated. You're right. We're, this is in, good. In the, because there's a lot of misinformation out there about this right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you are getting accurate information and right. you get a link. You can. If you're yeah, people interested. are just quoting the like talking points. Okay, yeah. got it. In the chapter Department of the Interior under Restoring American Energy Dominance, it reads... Given the dire adverse national impact of Biden's war on fossil fuels, no other initiative is as important for the Department of in the Interior under a conservative president than the restoration of the department's historic role managing the nation's vast storehouse of hydrocarbons, much of which is yet to be blank. Now, that looks like four dashes, and that's a mistake. It should just be an underline for eight, for one word. The nation's vast storehouse of hydrocarbons, much of which is yes, yet to be blank. What word goes in there? Okay. 
Number eight, in the chapter Department of Labor and Related Agencies under Needed Reforms, it reads, the president should direct agencies to blank reg regulations interpreting sex discrimination provisions as prohibiting discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, transgender status, sex characteristics, etc. Which correctly fills in the blank? A, rescind regulations, B, strengthen regulations, C, maintain regulations, or D, review regulations. Two more. Number nine, the original mandate for leadership served as a conservative plan of action for the blank administration. Again, it looks like, to me, it looks like three dashes and it should just be an underline. We're looking for fill in the blank uh, action for the uh, for the blank administration, providing much of the blueprint for the blank revolution. It's the same thing in both cases. It contained more than 2,000 detailed, actionable policy recommendations to move the federal government in a conservative direction. Fill in blo both blanks with one answer. And finally, <clears throat> Number 10, finally, what is the last numbered page in the document, plus or minus 20? Ooh. So, you know, there's an afterword, there's a foreword, and we've kind of, maybe some people have heard how many pages, you know, people are using different numbers. But in fact, what is the last numbered page in the document, plus or minus 20? Okay? Very Karen, good. Karen, yes. I have a request. I can't make out when the dashes house the letters, could you just tell us for the ones when you're telling us how many letters are in the word, how who's, many letters who's are on Gail's word? team? Raise your hand if oh, you're yeah, on Gail's team. I, I, yeah, so I does can't... anybody have that ability? No. So you guys stay in the room after everybody else goes and we'll do that. All you do is you just go put your cursor to the very end and just backspace one backspace again and count how many times you backspace okay so i'm gonna That's open all, all the rooms get number two don't go and we'll stay stay and figure this out and here comes deborah so i'm gonna put okay. her over on so here we went okay gail so you always are <laughs> janine you're like my cat who's always there like i want that i want that Okay, Gail, for number You're one, gonna get something. are you still here, Gail? I'm here. Okay, so for number one, there's four words, two, four, two, three, two, four, two, three, two, for number three. one. Okay. So I have to say that's interesting because I counted them out as you were doing it and I got two, three, two, three. So one of us is wrong and I hope it was me because otherwise everyone else is going to be screwed. Well, I would hope you would check, but you would check before you say that you would check if you were correct before you. Well, I, I typed it into Word. I backspaced a number of times and I counted right. it. So I, I'm, yeah, just saying. But it, yeah, because when I check it right now, it still works out. So I don't two, know. Two, four, two, three. Okay. Um, so I don't know, but we can talk about that. Which is why I'm hanging out here because I thought it was kind of unfair because it would be easy to do it what I did wrong. And yet you're giving the numbers directly to one team. So go ahead. Well, but the other teams are also starting to work on this. Go ahead. So, so it's two four two three. Two four two three. Yeah. Uh and the next number two, that has that four, is two. number four. So I got nine and ten, is so, that correct? So number four, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Wow, so, I, I don't right. believe I was wrong twice with that by that much. Okay, well, let me, yeah. I could be counting wrong here. I'm just trying, let me do this. Well, you know, right one, on. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, oh, it's 10, sorry. Yeah. It's 10. 10 and eight. One, I suggest two, we not do three, this this way four. anymore, just to say. One, two. Going forward. Well, we just, Nine and okay, ten, right? from now on, I will not give a clue for how many spaces are in. Or just, tell us how or just say the number. Or, or just, just say the letters. Doing now. Just tell everybody. Or how just give numbers. us the letter, the numbers. Yeah. Okay, so it's Nine ten and, and eight. ten for number four, right? Ten and eight. Eight, eight, eight and ten. Oh. Eight and ten. Yeah, I got nine. Karen, Karen is it eight and ten or ten and eight? Five. <laughs> Let me try. 
What about five? Well, wait a minute. Let's finish four. Is it? I had nine and ten from what I thought you said. Is that right or wrong? Okay, it's eight and ten for the for um... one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The nine first of word. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten for the next word. Nine and ten. Okay. Okay. Nine and ten. All righty. For five, five, I got eight. The next one is Rob. Can you please be quiet? Go ahead. Well, I was right twice instead Rob, of you. Rob, so I'm requesting. Hi. Hello, listening audience. Go ahead. This is an example of conflict amongst people who care for one of not another. Go ahead but sometimes get on each other's nerves and squish their joy when they're so enthusiastic about doing something. Go ahead. <laughs> it happens. We still love one another. Okay, number five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just making sure, and oh, I will, nice. and I will take the advice that um, that it adds a layer. It doesn't make it easier for folks, and it's not welcome. So I will take good advice, and I Thank won't you. do this anymore. I added it because people were asking before if the spaces matched, and I thought, oh, okay, well, we'll give them an extra hint with that. So I'm, I won't do that. Well, you could, you could I simply give, the hint simply give us the numbers. Yeah. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. Okay. So I, I have a question about question four. There's two blanks. Do we need to have both words? I thought you said only she said one, one word, one. one of the blanks, not both. Yeah, she said one was one. Okay, okay. So we're going to my yeah, room. If you we're get you get a point. We have a rule that you get a point if um you, you only need one answer. This one. Okay, okay. We thought we lost you guys. Oh yeah. Okay, so I stayed and hung around. So here's the answers on the well, not the answers, but the blank stuff. We were getting yeah. more data. Okay, oh, on question okay, one, it's two letters. Two three letters, two, two three letters, three letters. Two four two three. She said. Two four. Two four. That's what okay. she said. Okay, because there's only three spaces. Okay, so All you right. could put yeah. that under, like the underlying space equals the number of letters in the answer. I yeah, I've been two, doing yeah, that here. So this two, one is two, four, two, two three. three. Right. Okay. And then in question number four, it's nine and 10. Nine and 10. Nine and 10. That's correct. And okay. then in question five, that's five. eight. Okay, I got that. Yep, you got it. And I think that was it, yep. right? I think the rest of them were just blanks that okay. you can fill in. All okay. right, so where are we at? So we didn't get very far. Good. I'm wondering where you guys deserted us. So um, I really don't know. Yeah, we were going on 2323, three, but that didn't help. Yeah. So what do they say at the end of the oath of office, the president? God. No, it's like two letters. So it's we or. Um, I accept the nomin. I you know. No. So it is the last words the president says whenever he takes. I, I, I'm guessing there because that makes it's sense. The last it says to move upon the president's utterance. So what would those last four words be? Um, so help be me God. I. Yes. So help me God. Yeah. Very so good. Help me. Oh, yeah. So help oh, me God. Oh, very good. Oh, I thought it was, I am so dumb, but that's better. <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh, what if he says dog? So help me dog. He's like, you know, says it wrong. Do they, that means project 2025 doesn't happen. <laughs> okay. okay. And two, I, I, I know they're trying to gut the government, independent government agencies, but I don't know if that means that's the blank. No, no that makes sense. There are five sections. No, that's good. Yeah, I think that's that's good. Independent what? Government agencies. Like they want to God, they want to stop the Department of Education. Are there energy. government agencies that are independent? Yeah, all yep. they're supposed to be. And yeah, they're they trying are. to bring like the, everybody in and like make the them FBI like and the, the, the the Federal EPA. Reserve Board and <clears throat> oh, those yes. kinds of things. Thanking. Okay, question well, three. True. How many chapters are there? 
Mm. Nine? I mean, it's about a thousand page book. Is it a thousand pages? 900? Something very close I to that. I thought it was yeah. 200. I yes, thought it was okay. pages? No. I thought, I thought it was much longer. Maybe 900. I thought it. I thought it was 900. Or maybe, yeah, 900. It's okay, 900 so plus. So. How many chapters would there be? How many chapters? Well, well five if sections, you go to five. the above, um, so it says four posts, was, maybe four. Well, five sections, but each section no, could have multiple I chapters. Think they do, <clears throat> I think they do it by agency, doesn't it? Well, let's say there's five chapters within each section. That's 25 chapters. That's a guess. And then a few chapters going in couple. before the sections. So I would say 30. Want to round it up to 30? Okay. 30? Okay. That's a guess. People who participate should be in prison. Blank and public. Okay, then is pornographic rant? It's not a political Gordian knot. I've got to look that up. I've never heard of that. Oh, that's the okay, update number nine and ten. No, this one, do we only need one of the two or both? You choose one. Yeah. One or the other. No, no, no. Nine, nine, nine and letters. ten. No, you need both. Public media. Public. Or no, no, I think we only need one. Yeah, I think this one, you only need one of the two. Maybe it's government is the wait. Government fits the first one. Government and public. It should be. Let's see. The people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned and publicly executed. Right? Imprisoned. Something. Yeah, then there's period. Then there's period. There's period. Is a period. Yeah, period. Blank and Next word is a to be imprisoned. Okay. Blank and public. So doesn't government fit? Well, um, agencies. No. A G E N C I E S. They're talking about sex offenders. Individuals, individuals, and public. Uh, in I N. Too many letters, individuals. isn't it? I N D. Four, nine, and ten. What does I think individuals is eleven, isn't it? In individuals, I N D, I V, U A L, individual. Oh, so that's nine. That's ten. So one of them be individual, individual and public. Let's see, prevail. Public officials <clears throat> is nine. And individuals is but the second word is ten letters long. Public officials. Oh. That's not enough letters. Yeah, it's only nine. Public officials. Because public officials will be no more Republican Party. So I still think the first word is government and public. So government would be nine letters. Well, we only need one of the two words, so we can use government again and hedge over bets. Okay. Public entities. Sorry. That's not enough letters. It's got to be 10. That's still not enough letters. E-N-T-I-T-I-E. How about publishers? Public publishers? Are you sure she didn't get like the numbers mixed up? Because if we did... I'm not going back uh, over that again. <laughs> Government and public officials would be nine and ten, but it would be nine and well, government fits. So okay, and government is kind of different from yeah. public. So yeah, all right. Number question five: tenure nepotism. 
It's got an apostrophe at the end. It, it's some group's preference. Probably ends with an S. And your um, employees, employers' preference. It's eight letters. Employers. That's nine. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Um, Seniority. I mean, employer, employer would, no, because it would have to have moved the nest. Never mind. One, two. Senior, seniority. Yes. Oh, that's oh, what they want to get. Seniority already, already there for performance. Yeah, they want to push seniority way down. Yeah. So let's see. It's something that ends with the nest. Currently, so currently tenure. Personal preference? No, personal. Oh, that has a proud positive. Preference, seniority, um, and performance. What else affects uh, unions? <laughs> Maybe eight letters. Eight letters. Hmm. Because 10 years, how long somebody's been there. Right. Preference, seniority. Seniority is the same as tenure. I don't understand. Yeah. Performance. Yeah, it doesn't. I guess you could be hired in with seniority. What What else affects? How about in per, um, order that people are need. laid off? Oh. This is currently. This is referring to currently. Um, tenure. Oh, is that your GS level? Okay, this is referring to government. Right. So They're reductions. Yeah, so, they want to get rid of tenure and then whatever comes how next. How about this? Before... How about president's preference? Yeah, it, it ends in a, it's a. No, that's nine. A 10 if you have the S. It's an S apostrophe, so it's possessive. It's possessive, and it applies to government employees, agencies, agencies? Somebody's preference. Nope. It's not a union. It's not president. It's not government. Seven. And it's got to end with an S. It's got to end with an S apostrophe. So it's a preference, something's preference, but it's not the agency's preference. So. Let's go to the next one and come back to this because we're going to be yeah. on question five. Yeah. <clears throat> oh. That one we should be able to come up with if we give it a minute to. Oh, yeah. Sesame Street. I was thinking that. Yeah, I like that too. Can you believe they're calling on Sesame Street? <laughs> it's the only thing that's educational to them. That's not educational. They're teaching kids. Teaching kids to read is leftist. <clears throat> yeah, very. Yeah. There's there's too many ethnically diverse characters on oh the show. Mm -hmm. 60 minutes. Oh, no, that's CBS. Yeah. Let's see. Yet to be drilled or discovered. Number seven. Drilled is Explo probably five. exploited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, it could discovered, be drilled. identified or discovered. Um, so or it, she doesn't or recovered. on this one. On Found. So that means we could probably use 
Well, discovered and, and drill are better. I mean, they're different. Another which is yet to be drilled, found. I think, I think it's discovered. Because I have a feeling that they think it's all well, out there sitting there. There's yet much of which is yet to be discovered or utilized. Actually, I like utilized because I think they know it's there. It's just not used. That's why I was using exploited. Well, but I, utilize, but I'm utilize it. Yeah. Trump says drill baby drill. So I thought they'd use the same phrase that Trump uses all the time. Why didn't he yeah, to be drilled? catch Sarah Palin for his all right, we'll go drill. His originality. Yeah, his original. Well, this one at least we get we get a choice of. And I'm pretty sure it's rescind. It's a it's rescind, yeah. 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 Wow. What a, what a terrible country. Guys so fucked up. I'm so glad I'm here. Do you still Jamie. vote in the elections, uh, Jamie? Yeah, it's a little complicated, you know, because we're residents of Massachusetts. So it's, it's a little complicated, but yeah. Well, since you're not living in the state that you're voting in, why don't you just register to vote in like Atlanta or some, I mean, Georgia or Arizona or Massachusetts? Uh, uh, Minnesota or someplace where your vote will count more. Yeah, the, you have to be you a former can't resident. Do that. Yeah, you, you have to have a place that you lived. You have to have, you have, to have a You have to have a, a permanent residency. So it's a little complicated, but we'll do it. Let's see. Number nine. I assume this is Reagan, because it's the Reagan Revolution is this typical term I've heard. Yeah, that's it's the only one I can think of that's had a revolution. <laughs> Reagan yeah, administration, yeah. Reagan, Reagan revolution. I had no idea this is any. This is based on Reagan. Well, yeah, he wanted to do a lot of this stuff Biden, too. Really, that started the whole thing. Yeah, that started. Yeah, the whole Biden thing. Uh, is is the first one to really make an effort to roll back Reagan's policies. But he wasn't out for non-divorce or um, no. No. So or abortion or this is this is no they yeah, they just um, that's perverted the new what part. Reagan wanted twelve and okay. he, he wasn't radical age. enough. So nine hundred no. and well, we think it's somewhere in the nine hundred to a thousand range. I think it's just under a thousand. So I'll say nine eighty it's under a thousand nine seventy because we had a twenty twenty page plus or minus uh, nine eighty. So that would give us nine fifty to nine ninety. Excuse me. So nine seven. Want to drop. Do you think it was closer to a thousand or closer to nine hundred, Janine? I, I'm trying I thought, to remember. I thought I heard nine hundred, but I, I, I have this nine hundred too. Where oh, I don't right, so. remember numbers well. I think it's closer to nine hundred than it is a thousand because they say okay, it's a nine hundred page document, not like it's a okay. thousand page document. Yeah. So what? So what we go nine, 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 ten. Oops, nine, ten. No, because that, that puts us into the eight hundreds. So okay, I so would go down. Nine twenty. That's nine hundred to nine forty. I like that. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Okay. okay we have so one the more only one we. Done. Yeah, we still got to go back and get. Uh, where did it go? This one. What about seven? Seven. Oh, drilled. Okay. Oh, let's see which one. Okay, oh yeah, number five. five. Um, so it's like for unions and stuff like that after tenure, or like I'm thinking professors or whatever. You have tenure, and then what's the next thing that you're you're graded on? That's that's a preference. I was taking that as government agencies. So, well, yeah, I'm, but they use same same basic thing. Tenure means you know, you've been there long enough; you're locked in. Then after that, I always thought it was seniority was next, but I guess not. What about manager's preference? Yeah, no. I was thinking some variation on that that might do it. But that's that's eight letters. It's the M -A -N -E. I think it's manager, but that'd just be manager. M A N. Well, managers. E R. S would make it eight. Yeah, managers. Man sense. Managers. Put managers. managers. Okay. All right. Okay, I think we did it. 
But you didn't touch on the the, the worst of this document. I mean, just well, like, just we don't. Well, she 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 did. There's a lot. There's nine hundred oh, pages. Karen is lot. nice. She hit on the nice parts of it. Oh, it's disgusting. <laughs> the pleasant ones. This is the Making, pleasant oh, aspect just of execute it. Execute people who create pornography. Oh my! It's so fucking disgusting. Oh, did we see how many? Yeah, we did. Okay. Making Bible study mandatory in public schools. You know that's gonna interfering with some of those red wing <clears throat> pornography. That's that's gonna upset people. Oh, can you imagine oh. all the people who? It's, yeah, can you? I can't even. I can't. Oh, that's the killer. Bible belt. Oh, this is like me. the uh, Taliban. Yeah, we should it have is. the Ten Commandments in every single school. So they mm -hmm. can read it. That's why I like the picture Alan posted in Facebook where the whole thing's in the original Hebrew. <laughs> Nobody can read it, but it's posted. You know, yeah. uh, you, you know what? Somebody said something about translating in the future, um, a booty call, what that literally means right now. Imagine someone trying to uh, translate that in the future. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The Bible's the same thing. <laughs> How would they even? Aren't define we all fluent in Aramaic? How do you define <laughs> pornography when it when it's not even we 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 can't even define it? It's not like very good question, Susan. It's, it's so they say, that you was, know had, that was handled it. by the Supreme Court, especially if we're going to execute people it. for it. Taking pictures of kids in the bath bathtub is that pornography? Mm. Yes. Fun. Scared. I'm even more scared than I was before I started the game, but <laughs> that's why you put me first. So, you know, we job, I Karen. wanted to download this thing and read it, and I was just too depressed about everything to do it yet. And now I'm kicking myself. I well, tried to read the I, I read a bunch of it today. It's too long. Yeah, it's way you, too much. You can't uh, just go to the sections that are of interest to you and um and remember that uh they you know that we can move this allow this to move us to action don't get sad get organized don't get depressed get organized or just keep uh, spreading truth reason wisdom in the circles in which you travel susan and others uh you don't the have pressure. to sure the pressure you, you don't have to stop and become a political activist if you want to do that you can but just continuing to be a person of reason truth reasonableness civility compassion where you exist is enough oh wow the years yeah but not all of us can do that Very well that being said i would like to apologize <laughs> for losing my temper with rob i was so excited about this and rob has a really good eye for yeah, that's okay karen thank you i'm sorry I'm, I no, I'm gonna say this rob has a good eye for things being accurate and i like that about rob i admire that about rob and i forgot to appreciate that in him when I got disappointed and angry with myself for messing up on the number of spaces. But had he and Gail not inquired, we wouldn't have learned there was a mistake. So I know the proper answer is thank you. So there we go. Thank you, Karen. Yes. So it's nice to have the spaces. If if you're looking for a specific word, mm -hmm. then I think having the number of characters, yes. Number of characters is yeah. a good idea. It's yeah. a, so a great idea. Just and, put them in and parentheses. In as Assuming Gail, that you can like spell. <laughs> I, I know it helped that would be my problem i'm afraid those... i would well, give you the wrong numbers word. if i had to count the letters you're talking wrong. about us now okay but if you could come but if if the goal is to come up with like it could be one of several words that all kind of mean the same thing then yeah. of course you don't want a character yeah. number count but no Got this it. is how it's handy it helped us a lot it's like playing you know it's like doing a crossword puzzle okay no it needs to be five letters right so if people did not get the notice that number one is actually two four two and three that it, i think everybody got it but if you didn't we'll be fair about that so it is so help me god so as soon as he says the word so help me god they imagine this right and keep in mind that the there are these four pillars and and the this mandate for leadership project 2025 is one part of it the next one is training they have these classes because last time nobody knew what they were doing in the trump administration if you will recall yeah. so number number one is this playbook is this uh uh mandate for leadership number two is a personnel database where you can put in applications everyone can put in applications from their inner circle so that way they can pick uh you know he can pick his uh 
to feel as appointees easier. Number three is an academy, an educational system taught by experts, because again, he put all sorts of people in there that didn't know what they were doing. So they've added an academy uh, element to this. And then number four is the 180 day transition playbook that begins as soon as he finishes. Uh, so help me God in their imagination. <laughs> but President Biden or Harris will not be letting that happen. So this has one fewer pillar than Esla. There you go. Number two, regulatory, independent oh. regulatory agencies. Oh, that's right. So that regulatory. tells you, that tells you what their priorities are, right? The areas that they want to look in and regulatory yeah. uh, agencies are a big part of it. They want to mm -hmm. modify those. Um, so how many chapters are there? There are 30 chapters. So 28 oh, to 32. Oh, oh, oh. Dead on. <laughs> 28 to 32. Wow. I missed it by one. <laughs> I counted them. I counted them in my head. That's it. 28 to 32 gets the point. Okay. What, what kind of ridiculousness is this? You know, they're going to outlaw pornography, whatever pornography is, but the people who produce and distribute it should be imprisoned. And, and who are these people that they're saying, uh, if, that they, when they pur uh, purvey it, they should be classed as, and that's correct, that's what they say, not classified, classed as registered sex offenders. Who are these horrible pushers of pornography? Teachers and librarians. Public Educa librarians? Uh, oh oh my God. Bill, don't steal my thunder. Educators, educators and public librarians. Oh friend. my God educators and public librarians i wow. get, I, I get uh, posts all the time so uh, asking about do i am i satisfied with my library so then the next <laughs> one is as under yeah. the personnel what who you know how are they going to change these this is, again has made the news a lot and people will say <laughs> well, it doesn't say that it doesn't really say that well it says this and people are interpreting it a certain way. So in this order, right, you have a tenure and then uh, so-and-so's preference, then seniority, and then performance in that order. Um, they don't, because they want to rule out favoritism. They want to work with people if they can. These are values in like union jobs. And really these people hate unions and they, you know, they want to do away with it. But who are these people? They are veterans. Oh, they want to take away veterans' yeah. preference. So at tenure, veterans' preference, seniority, and oh, what? So, they, so what you're hearing in the rule in the in the people criticizing it is they want to kick out all the veterans who are currently employed in the government. And then people say, no, it doesn't say that. Well, no, it doesn't say that. However, they want to remove it as the number two <laughs> on the list of the criteria. Hmm. They so they're doing it. it subtly. So, mm. but but we must be factual, right? Okay, a lot okay. of you, a lot of you got this. What is this horrible use of public taxpayer money that's promoting leftist leftist values? And most of you got this Sesame Street teaching our hey. children. Uh, and this is my opinion now, teaching our children counting and the alphabet, as well as modeling how to be a responsible community member, have compassion and foster empathy are left biases. Really, really, apparently so. They're left biases. Well, that's because there are black people and Hispanic people on that show who are teaching kids the alphabet and how to count. That's why it's leftist. And, and the real problem with that show is the overappreciation of cookies. <laughs> okay so you would think you would think that the answer here would be kind of obvious for someone that wanted you know to drill more here uh the managing the nationwide storehouse of hydrocarbons uh you know the storehouse meaning the, the sources under our soil um you would think it would be untapped it would be uh un uh you know un whatever, unutilized, underutilized. But for some reason, they chose this word, the nation's vast storehouse of hydrocarbons, much of which is yet to be discovered. It hasn't been discovered, but it's there. But it hasn't been discovered. Oh, <laughs> that's, that's very clear. clear. Yeah. That's what you're saying. 
The other thing yeah, I, was I, with, with the, with the I, I guessed that in. one by wondering what would be the stupidest word that could be in there. <laughs> what would be? Well, the um, what was oh wrong? My God. I actually uh, said that first, and then I said, "No, they're not stupid Wendy enough to say that." What, Wendy? I was just going to say that that one of the claims that I've been hearing about the Biden administration is that that there's been more production of energy than at any other time in the history of the United States. Right. But Wendy, those really... are facts, and that's reality. These people <laughs> don't seem to be interested oh. in that. I I was so confused. Yeah. They're looking me. like like the UFOs. Yeah. They're yet to be yeah. they're yet to be yes. discovered. Yet they, they're, they're there though. They're they're not, for sure, they're there. They're, they're not the reality based community to cope some <laughs> staffer. Hey, okay. hey so everybody! Can... Just FYI, breaking news: Trump's speaking right now, and we don't oh, yeah. care. Oh, <laughs> so, number right, eight. right now. So, uh, so number eight, uh, what what does he want to do about right now? They have regulations that that do allow interpreting sexual orientation, gender identity, transgender status, and sex characteristics when people are you know talking about discrimination. What do they want to do about that? Well, the reasonable thing might be to review that, right, or strengthen it if you're sure. No, they want to rescind it. <laughs> rescind it. No protection under sex, sex discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, transgender status, and sex characteristics, et cetera. So it's more than that. Okay, this is, is this something new? This is nothing new. This is, you know, the same thing in new packaging. And we all will mm -hmm. remember viscerally when this happened. We didn't know there was a name for it. We didn't know there was a plan for it. But there was, and if you haven't seen Bad Faith uh, online, watch Bad Faith. Great, great thing. Uh, okay, so here we are, number eight, number nine, Reagan, the Ronald Reagan administration. This was first published in January of 1981. I was a senior in high school then, 17. The oh. original mandate served as a conservative plan during the Reagan administration, and they called it the Reagan Revolution. Okay. And, so and how many pages? We've all heard, <laughs> I think a lot of us have heard around 900, around 900 and something. So there are some blank pages. There's, you know, you print it out. There's the cover page. There's an afterward. There's this and that. But what, how many numbered pages? Plus or minus 20, I said. The answer is? 887 so 866 yeah. 80 oh, oh, I thought. Oh. okay so if you want to learn more about this i mean don't lose sleep over it but just go to the section <laughs> you're interested in Thanks. such as so maybe that. <laughs> maybe the media section the the f uh, fcc section just go to the one section that interests you so i want to let you know how i um how i found this so there's the document project 2025 but Again, there are different versions out there and people are modifying it and then people are offering quotation, uh, cut and paste from it, things that aren't accurate. So I, I backed up how I got to that place. I went to the Heritage Foundation, which is one of the back, one of the many backing organizations. OK, and then you click Project 2025 about midway down the page and then there's a policy tab. And it says, read the mandate. So it, even if someone is looking to find out about this, you get like four or five layers of interpreting what's in it before you even get to it. And again, oh, wow. that's typical with them, right? But um, don't be, you know, click it, use the search yeah. feature for words you want. Don't be overwhelmed. Look at, look at the area you like and speak authoritatively about that. You do not have to be an expert on any of this. The end. Very good. I wonder if I, I like your guys. background, Kevin. Yep. Oh, I want to know if the word atheist is in their mandate in, in there anywhere. You can search oh. your text search because I would be surprised if we there. are on, we are yeah. hunted and in imprisoned or something. Talking we'll about government employees that identify as non Christians, including atheists, agnostics, or anything else, could be at liberty to lose their job. Wow. No, no, I'm I'm looking at it right now. It is not there. The right, word but this is there. why we want to look at the labor. <laughs> we want to look at the labor section, and we want to see. You see, um, 
Um, they say it's based on performance, but it's so easy to bullshit somebody out of a job, uh, you know, ride their backside when you want to get rid of them. That's why mm -hmm. we, that's why unions are good. That's why tenure is good. That's why the veterans preference is good and all these other things, because faith is right. You better believe it. They're going to kick people out who are not on board with their version of Christianity, even if it doesn't mm -hmm. say that literally. Yeah, maybe the word non-religious or something like that might be, or non. Like, well, one of one of the tests that they're going to require is you to say, like, what is one politician that you admire, or public figure, and they'll use that as a test of whether you will be loyal enough to the new regime. I so, doubt that that is actually in this document. Mm -hmm. So well, they if, said that one of the if tests the worst was... comes to worst, I'll let you know when I don't. Yeah, like Karen it. said, there's a lot of. Uh, ambiguity ambiguity yeah. and there's a lot of people who are saying what they think they've heard or what they've heard other people say she said right. go to the text and actually read this stuff okay let's the ambiguity is there for a purpose all right so at the if rally you want, if you want to be a dictator you need to say some pretty ambiguous ambi can't pronounce the word but you need to be pretty amb ambiguous ambiguous about what you're saying so some people could interpret it as saying oh you're not saying anything that bad and other people know you're so been so unspecified on pacific that yeah Expect it can be interpreted to guy. be the worst yeah and it can the worst. Be the worst. okay scores worst. at the rally an officer yelled mickey mouse he should have yelled donald duck five no maxi pads on our ears <laughs> Wow. One inch. Many? What was that? Ten. Ten. Wow. Somebody read it. Somebody read it. Yeah. I, I, it. I, 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 I spent some time reading it this afternoon. All right. Sad. Mm -hmm. Group three. Six. Republicans cause a run on band-aids. Four. Um, Honey, wake up. Seven. Wow, we got a nice spread. Six point <laughs> four. You know, he's filled with Republicans. That's, that's an interesting spread. <laughs> you can tell who did their homework. Good job, Karen. Okay, so Gail, you're up. Okay. And I think... while I go puke. <laughs> Get a puke break. I think we're ready for a complete change of pace. Please. So, oh, something oh, good yeah. topic. Completely different. Uh, the Tony Awards just happened very just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, this is going to be a topic on the Tony Awards. Okay. Okay, let's start with question one. Let's start with this year. What play won Best Musical for 2024? And you hear a lot of which play and which person in this category. Number two, number two, not number, number, number two. Okay. Number two, the first two years of the Tony Awards had no medallion. The winners received a scroll, a gold money clip for the men, and a contact for the women. <laughs> in, the, in the third year, there was a design contest for the award, which was given at the third annual dinner for the first time and is behind me here. What three year span was this? From what year to what year were those three years? Question three. What musical has had the most Tony Awards with 16? By the way, all of this information is coming from the official Tony website. So you said Tony Awards, but you wrote Tony nominations, which is correct. Nominations is what, is what this one is about. What has the most nominations? We'll talk about awards too. Number four, <laughs> what musical 
won more Tony Awards than any other, with 10 for its original 1949 production and seven for the 2008 revival. Five. Sorry, I'm having to change these numbers. Number five, what musical won the most Tony Awards in one year? Number six. Who was the composer with the most Tony Awards? Number seven. What choreographer won the most Tony Awards? This is in the history of the award, obviously. Eight, who was the host of the most Tony Award telecasts? Number nine. What is the winner of the best musical with the longest run to date, opening in 1988 and still going strong? Ten. What actress won six competitive Tony Awards for performance more than any other individual and won in four different categories? So the person has to satisfy all of those. And I do have a bonus because this question is really hard, I think, but I never do know with you in a few, few votes. <laughs> so I made it a bonus because it just didn't seem fair to not make a bonus. Only a few artists have won all four of the entertainment industry's Ooh. top competitive honors, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Awards, the EGOTs, right? Mm -hmm. Only one person has won a double EGOT, winning oh. two or more in, of each of those awards. What composer was this? So, that, so, so, it's, so doing that is really good for the ego. <laughs> You're right. Well, they made I it to a, a question here on our trivia game, so that's like the height of. Yeah, I have a, I do have a question. Number three versus number four. Just maybe I'm not interpreting it right. If number three is saying who had the most Tony nominations at sixteen, then how could number four say who won with seventeen? Wouldn't you have to have seventeen nominations? No, because it was in two different years. Okay, so number three is saying in one year. Right, and you, you win it in a year, but mm. this particular play was able to win because it won two separate years, because it won and then it won as a revival. Right, so number three is saying they had 60 nominees in they, one year. The only one talking about more than one year is four. Okay. Are the ones that are talking four. about multiple awards. Okay, just wanted to make sure I got that right. All right, thanks. Okay. Okay, okay. any other questions? Let us. Yeah, Jeez. one question. Oh. Uh, there, are, I think there are three categories of musical 
that's um, the, the so there are three possible best best musicals in a year. No, well, there's only one best musical. It's the biggest award in the in the whole. It can only be one. <laughs> There's only one play that wins Best Musical each year. There are more than one play that wins, but only one that wins Best Musical. There are ones that win Best Best Revival. There's ones that win Best Straight Play, but only one wins Best Musical. Okay. 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 Let's go. Okay. Oh, shit. I'm going to be pretty close to useless. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, gee. Uh, Lee? Well, I like musicals, but me, I... I don't pay attention to who wins them, but I do like musicals, too. Uh, okay, I can I can guess. Let's start with this year. What play won Best Musical for 2024? Does anybody know that? No idea. Not a clue. Oh come on! It just happened, you guys. Um, and I've never, I've I, never paid attention. Well, um, the one about green the, summer, Leonard. Hmm? The one about the um, the witches from the um, wicked. From the, yeah, maybe not. That's just the one I was thinking of. Though. Okay, it's not Hamilton. It's not. Doesn't have to be a. Play that just came out that year. I think it does. Doesn't it have to be the one that became? Oh, okay. Yeah. So Wicked, Wicked's been out for. That. Wicked's been out, for yeah, it's been out for several years, I believe. But uh... so okay, let's come back to it. maybe it'll maybe it'll it'll bubble up in our surface because I'm sure we've all seen this somewhere. Okay. The, um, this is a confusing question. We need a Robin here. She's the expert on musicals. And yeah, Peter, you love musicals. Yeah, but I know, but I don't care about uh, awards. Okay. The first right. two years. Of the Tony what Award. are the years of what year did they start with the Tonys? Well, what when did yeah when did the Tonys start? Not a clue. So like forty five. Yeah, I know. I know it was after right after World War Two. So on. So forty six. Forty six, forty seven, somewhere around there. I don't. Well. Pick a year, 1940. 47 to 50? I don't know. I'm just... Okay, 1947. You're, you, Who, you... Who's uh, who's keeping track? Um, I'm I'm writing these down, so I'll, okay. I'll, I'll contribute that. Okay. Well, I've got a spreadsheet, but it, I erase it as I put in the new answers. What right. musical had the most Tony nominations with 16? Hamilton? Rent, um, Gone with the Wind. No, that wasn't a musical, huh? <laughs> yeah, not quite. Um, I like Hamilton. That's a good one because I think they pretty well dominated one year where there just weren't many musicals at all. Yeah, that would. If I had to guess, that's what I would guess. Yeah. So we're gonna say Hamilton. It could be also old, like um. Well, okay, let's try Hamilton. So I know number four. Oh, what musical one more Tony? So that's oh, that's why it, I said I'll be. Is it the Wizard of Oz and and the no. Wiz? No, South Pacific. Oh, interesting. It was a revival of South Pacific. Yeah, I didn't see either. Really? Okay, I, I, all right. Yeah, that's the only one that I know. That's why I said I would be essentially useless instead of what I would normally hey, be, which is we'll... completely useless. You're not useless. Okay, in this what, I am. Oh, okay. Okay. How many? What musical won the most Tony Awards in one year? West Side Story. Ooh. I don't know. Do you think? Do you know that, or are you guessing? I'm guessing. It is anything. Okay. In the absence of someone knowing, we remember. There's also say West Side Story. Yeah. Uh, the Greece, composer, there's, this one I think went. Which one? Six? Uh, could it Sondheim. be 
who? Sondheim, Stephen Sondheim. I think we had a category on him once before you you joined us. I think it was, I think we did have a category. We had to list Sondheim song, um, things. And I looked him up afterwards. I was like, this guy's prolific. I'd never heard of the dude. Oh, yeah. He's done a lot of this music stuff. Okay, what know. choreographer won the most Tony Awards? <laughs> okay, a choreographer. Oh, um, oh, the guy. Oh, there's even a song about him. Um, and there's even a play about him. Um, oh, I've heard of him. Say it, and I'll know. I'll, I'll, it... Yeah, I my DC. brain just DC. There is a play about him. Yeah. La 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 la. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Yeah, what the hell is the name of that play? Damn. Is his name Ed? Is it Bob Fosse? Bob Fosse. Fosse. Oh, very good. good Bob job. Fosse. Bingo. Good for you. Bob Fosse. Thank you. See, it bubbled up the teamwork here. Yeah, okay. teamwork. Who is the host of the most Tony Award telecasts? Well, obviously, it's going to be Tony someone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe not. Um, okay. Who, um, can we name one host? What is the winner of the best musical with the longest run to date, opening in 1988? Mamma Mia? Ah, I've I never seen wrong. it, but I know it's super. No, popular. I don't think it opened that late, that long ago. Mamma Mia? Oh, it's been around a long time, at least the 90s. Yeah, I don't know. I'm writing it down until. Uh, okay. When did Annie open? Isn't that still going on? But and it is a musical. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Okay, number 10. What actress won six competitive Tony Awards for performance more than any other individual and won in four categories? Barbara Streisand? I think she produced. No, you know who I think it is? Um, the actress, she she was in West Side Story. I think she's still performing. But she was... Um, hmm. Hispanic. Um, Phantom of the Opera, longest musical mm -hmm. still. Okay, that, that hey, one's hey, been out there for That is good too. You're talking about nine, the number nine. Yeah. Okay, I think you're right. Six competitive. Okay, a Hispanic actress. Yeah. I think Fear. so. Um, Rita Moreno. That's who I'm trying to think of. But I don't know if I'm right. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't bet against her. Okay, let's put Rita. So we don't have answers for number one and number eight. Okay, let's go back up to it. And we haven't done our bonus. Um, and we haven't right. done the bonus. Oh, what was the question on the bonus? Like Who won the double league? Okay, a few artists have won all four of the entertainment industry's top. Oh, yeah. that's And when they call it EGOT, it's the Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Awards. Only right, one so, person has won a double EGOT, winning two or more of each award. What composer right. is this? A composer. Yeah, I, I I wonder if it actually is. Could it be? 
um, Tim Burton. Oscar oh. Hammerstein. I, Ooh. I that's two composers. Hammerstein. Yeah. Rogers and Hammerstein. Um, Cause it, okay. To win an Oscar is a movie. Right. So they'd have to be a composer that won a movie. Right. Yeah, but uh, so many musicals have been made into movies. And a Grammy would be somebody who's made um, a music, right? It's musical, like music, right. like a song you play on the radio or something. And right. an Emmy is for what? TV. TV. So it's probably not Hammerstein because... TV, they're back in the 50s, right? The 40s, 50s? Yeah, pretty much 40s and 50s, yeah. Those are, could it be Tim Burton? And and uh, he won for um, one of the Nightmare Before Christmas songs? No, but he wouldn't have done TV unless you count Edward Scissorhands. I think he did. It doesn't mean he won Best Picture. It means he won for uh, composer won something maybe. yeah he won something like a i don't think it you know what i don't think it's him burton but it i have no idea who else it could be i'll write it until we come up with something else okay so question one what's the best musical for 2024 <laughs> So something uh, new this year. I usually don't hear about musicals until they're at least a decade old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was saying, well, you would think, you know, reading the paper, there'd be headlines and I I avoid those things. Only a decade. I mean, I I love 40s, 40s. Yeah, musicals. me too. I've been watching a lot. No, when when I first hear of them, they're yeah. a decade old. I may not actually pay attention until, you know. Half a century later. Oh my goodness. I, mean, I, can, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I can sing Oklahoma songs and South Pacific. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've never seen South Pacific. Okay. Question oh, it's a great eight. musical. Who is the host? Uh, can we name need even one host? Johnny Carson? I mean, it doesn't mean he has, well, they may have come from the world of music. I have no idea. Okay. Name I have no idea. What are we talking about now? Number eight. Who was the host of the most Tony Award telecasts? Oh, no, I didn't know anything. Gail, is everybody stumped? You're muted. You're muted. She doesn't no, want to tell varies. us. Hmm? It definitely varies. We, we, we have a couple that are guesses, and then we have two that we're missing, but we've done pretty good, I think. We've okay. made it educated. I'm pretty sure Please. we have at least one correct. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I would I'm say maybe close, three. I'm going to close the rooms then, right? Okay. Um, number eight. Oh, oh, can we change one thing? I just was looking at my notes. On number two, I said 47 to 50. It'd be 47 to 49 if it was right. a three year span. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, eight. Who was the host of the most Tony Awards telecast? Name somebody famous, you guys, who's been Bill around. Brent. How about Bob Newhart? <laughs> oh, okay. Let's put Bob Newhart. I I, I don't think so. Well, it's better well, than no. the other answers we, we have. We don't have anybody. Um, and. A musical. Okay. Um, number nine. What is the one. best musical with the longest run today? Oh, we put okay. Phantom of the Opera. We, we, yeah, we put Phantom of the Opera for that. But I was still, somebody okay. has got to have this information somewhere in their brain. You must have read a headline. What is a musical that came out in 2020, 2023, you know, the end of the year or 2024? Must be 2023 because we're still in 2024. Um, but the award, it's the awards of 2024 for the 2023. Okay, so that helps. We have a, we have 2023 now open, you guys. 
That's another year. So what would it be? Not a clue. Um, said I I doubt I've I've heard the names of of more than one. Can you name one in six seconds? Like four seconds, three seconds. Wow, this kind of feels like the Project 2025 category where I should have been paying attention. And I feel like I should, <laughs> it's like, how can I not know? <laughs> know we're doing that. other very important things <laughs> has anybody joined has anybody joined to make uh to help us out here oh i was thinking of him so alan i will try my that? to stay on for longer so, so susan vincent is, hours, is, but that's not is, the answer. is operating on on on, on uh Jeremy fumes Ralph? vincent's operating on fumes and he wants to stay can can you switch alan and so he's next yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks. I guess Alan, who, Alan really who? wanted to stay on. So then I gotta then I gotta figure out how to do it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you got, break the, there, you got the break, Al. So uh, oh, there'll right. be a break, Alan. Okay. Okay, I need to step away. Okay. Susan is stepping away, so let's continue with the answers. Okay, are you ready yeah. for the answers? Yeah. Uh, this confirmed for me listening to you folks that this is the reason that I've always said I know different things than you folks now. Some of you said I've never seen a Tony Award. Well, I say that all the time when you give categories, and I've never missed a Tony Award, I think. Okay, <laughs> so let's go through. And Tony Awards are just Broadway, right? Question one. This year, just a oh. couple of weeks ago, The Outsiders oh. yes. won Best Musical. Oh, I didn't know they made that to a musical. And I'm leaving it up long enough if you want to read this. This is all comes from the official Tony website. Question two, 1947 to 49, right after the war. Oh, that's of course, year. the award after that they the gave war. was a good hint, right? That was when they give a woman a compact. What did we say, Ron? We had 46 to 48. 46 to 48. <sighs> Missed it by that much. Uh, interestingly, interestingly, if you look at this as an actual ticket, the ticket to the Tonys was seven dollars. <laughs> That's a lot of money back then. That's a lot of money. But that might have been like a mortgage a on a house a at the time. Than... So yeah, who knows? <laughs> okay, number three, the most Tony. I think a lot of you got that. Uh, is Hamilton. Uh, Hamilton uh, has sixteen nominations more than any other play. Oh, damn it. We did Fillmore. And, we... and they're only eligible for the year that they are new. Some of you didn't even seem to know that. You were looking at over time. And the only ones that were over time are the ones that said they're over time. Because each year, the play wins or doesn't win, and that's it. And if it's over time, it counts time and a half? Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Number four. More Tony Awards over all its productions to date than any other musical was South Pacific. And I know at least one team got that. Thank you, Karen. And in 1949. But well, then again, when they did the revival, it got seven more as a revival. And Ron adores this show. Yeah. <laughs> as everyone it. should. It's <laughs> wonderful. It's got, best, uh, it's got the best song about discrimination I've ever heard, though. It's it fantastic. Uh, you got to be carefully taught. It's fantastic. It Number is. five oh, is the princess. Oh. oh. That was a good one. Mm -hmm. That was. Number six, I think many of you got that, was Stephen Sondheim. So the most Tony oh, Awards gosh. altogether for. Oh, Alan. We yeah, changed. Sorry, sorry. I, I, I couldn't remember if he did the lyrics or the music. Sorry. Imagine what that feels like to have the president put that medal on you. Yeah. It depends on which president. Ask, yeah, it depends on the Rush president. Limbaugh, or the late Rush Limbaugh. Okay, number seven. I think somebody got that one too. I heard it. Bob Fosse. Yeah. yeah. Choreographer. Wow. We got 
won. Woo. Look at all these all these plays that he did. These are copied right from their website. Eight Tony Awards for choreography. Number eight, Angela Lansbury. Oh, oh I feel so Family has there. toasted five times. She has toasted, has toasted it. With four, Neil Patrick Harris, who has the most famous ones because they are they were absolutely fantastic. And Hugh Jackman also was absolutely fantastic. And that's why they were invited back so often. But Angela well, 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 wait Lansbury, a minute. What, what was this? We put Hugh Jackman. What? That doesn't count? No. Oh, no, he wasn't number yeah. one. I'm yeah. just telling you he was in second place. Angela Lansbury had five. Hugh Jackman was a good guest because he had four. And so did Pat. That's a half a point, right? Half a point. Well, wait, you wanted to know who was the host, not the hostess. So it's Hugh Jackman. <laughs> oh. uh, Broadway, Broadway doesn't do that. They call them all actors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, number um. nine was indeed oh, Phantom of the Opera. It was. Oh, okay. And as many of you noticed, it's still running. And in order to be in that category- well, then why does it say 2024? Sorry? <laughs> Last year's date, 2023. Well, that's it's still running as of 2023. It's 2024. We don't know if it's going to make it to the end of 2024 yet. But it's 2024 now if it's still running. It's still running now. But it hasn't, 2024 isn't over yet. Yes. It doesn't There's, matter. Uh, it still made it into 2024. Yeah, like, well, does it have to, December because 31st? The awards, otherwise, I can't put 2024. Talking about that the Tony sense. Awards uh, that were given this year pertain to what gotcha. happened last year. So, But it's still but, running, is what I'm saying. But that yeah. isn't that it longest running isn't an award. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Gail, I'm saying it's still going strong. This is 2024. That's Thank my you for point. the beautiful pictures. It is still going on. It's still going strong. Isn't pedantic? Number 10. If you know yes. Broadway, you know oh, Audra McDonald. Audra McDonald, yes. Okay. If somebody uh, said that in our group, but we didn't get it. Some of you had some of the others. Angela, Angela Lansbury and Julie Harris had six, but they they did not win all in competition. That's why I said competitive awards. They also won for an honorary award. What so about Patty Lapone? Anything there for her? Uh, no. Oh, Rita Moreno. Was Rita Moreno mentioned at all? Uh, not I in any of these categories. Of course, they both, they both be mentioned. But was, not Julie, it was Julie Andros? And one of the great interest? stories about Audra McDonald was she originally applied to be in the chorus line of a chorus line and wasn't, it didn't get the part, which is, which she's always said was very good for her career because right after that, she got a more important part. And finally, for the bonus, uh, his name, his name is Lopez. Robert Lopez, and he has won all of those, and I thought that was fairly obscure. Is he a real person? That kind of looks like an AI image just stuck on <laughs> did, somebody's head. Didn't, didn't Somebody he write, him winning all of those different awards. And he, he won. won a, he, didn't he write Frozen? He wrote Let It Go, and he wrote Remember Me by Coco. That's what the two yeah. Grammys he got for. Yeah, he got Frozen. Oh, uh, his work. By the way, uh, in the uh, in the one of the photos for the South Pacific. It looked like the women were wearing uh, bikini tops, and I thought the bikini was introduced and uh, and given that name uh, uh, after the uh, atom bomb tests on bikini at all. <laughs> well, maybe I, that's the revival. Yeah. No, it's, I don't see a bikini. I just see yeah, in the right picture. Two piece is not a bikini, uh, yeah. Jim. Um, uh, the earliest bikinis were basically what we would call uh, two pieces. Now they they right. weren't they, the, they weren't the strings that they wear the, now. Not the much, uh, but the bikini were, referred to the triangular uh, cut of the bottoms. Oh, okay. Ah, oh. this was shot on well, the bikini. Those are just all. shorts. There. <laughs> those are shorts, and the tops are brassieres. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. yeah. But thank you for um, necessitating us recalling this slide because they're lovely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, and on the uh, and it's a great play. Heck. The picture on the right uh, <laughs> is from the movie. Yeah. 
It's my wife's oh. favorite. Gail, thank you for this right. category. I learned stuff and remembered things that I knew about and had forgotten about. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just, okay. Just the thing about the origin of the name bikini for the swimsuit uh, uh, stuck in my mind because it's an oddball thing. Okay. Anybody with access to the scorecard want to do scores now? Wait, can I ask a quick question of my team? Uh, uh, Vincent, did we not get the date, the dates right? Back in number, no, uh, we did not. Uh, what what did we put we down? Were way off. We got nineteen twenty something. Oh yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> like, Wrong war. We did the same oh, thing. Way off. I missed it by that much. <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Broadway was a center for the uh, uh, musical theater way before uh, uh, the forties, wasn't it? No, the first big musical was Oklahoma. Richard Rogers and Hammerstein. Yeah, but yeah, but wasn't there stuff like um, uh, oh uh, Gershwin uh, and Sorry, doing major uh, musicals bef well before that? Yeah, but that doesn't mean they had tone. They didn't have the award. Opera. FYI, I just put the slideshow okay. in the chat if anybody wants to look at it and review the commentary. Thank you okay. very much. And thank you. Uh, we don't need to go with a plan to take the scores because our glorious leader is here. I'm back. Oh, Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, we're going to have... Oh, we're no. switching Romero. And we're is, there a record, is there a record for the lowest score over an entire an evening? There will be by the time you're done, Al. Well, I'm, I'm afraid of that. <laughs> it's so terrible. <laughs> I want to look at that. So hold on. Yeah, Gail has found w our Gail has found our Punch and Judy and Lighthouse combined. All right, sharing the Tonys screen. are widely viewed and really becoming more of a part of pop culture. All right, Republicans cause the random band aids. Now one. one. Oh, out. oh one. wow! Uh, Donald Duck. Four. Um, and, uh, sad. Uh, seven. Ooh. And then, honey, wake up. Six. And last but not least, maxi pads on your ears. <laughs> Six. Six. Uh, I'm looking forward to going back and looking at these, uh, numbers. All right. So let's take a screen photo. Photo, everybody. We'll take a quick break. Intermission, as they say in the Tony world. Okay. Anyway, good night. Wait, you didn't take a picture. Night, oh, Jim. Right. Okay. I'll hey. stick around for the picture and then okay. I'll say good Everybody look at the camera. One, two, three. Smile, Katniss. Got it. Okay. Okay. Five Bye, minutes. Jim. Bye. See you, Jim. See you again. Bye. Bye, Jim. Hey, good night to me, too. I'm Bye, fine. Wendy. Good night, dear Wendy. Wendy. Night, Wendy. Night, Wendy. I'm going to stay on for just a little bit longer. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. During the break, Deborah, did you want to talk about uh, tomorrow? Why yeah, don't you sure. talk about it really quick? Because I've got. Yeah. Um, a so Janine is hosting and Deborah is hosting for Global Skeptics in the Pub. Everyone's invited. So it looks like, Deborah, you're on nine to 10. Pretty late. Is, is there a link to this? Is is that true? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, well I'm seven. I'm seven to eight. Oh, we'll, we'll give you information at the end. Deborah and Janine and I are going to try and talk about this a little bit, and we'll give you a link as well. Thank you. Deborah just came out of a meeting. Yeah. So and right. So that was just sort of a last end of the thing planning meeting. We didn't. So, Carolyn was so Janine too. is is hosting as well in the same time zone. So that's what she's referring to. Yeah. Right. And so I've we're had a horrible be on... time figuring out the UTC. <laughs> the oh. Universal <laughs> time. I'm just like really struggling with that. <laughs> I think it's listed both ways somewhere on the chart. Um, not of the spreadsheet that I got. 
Oh, but I okay. wanted to know who I was passing off to. Um, do you know who's doing it for the Bay Area Skeptics? Is that Dave? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't looked at it. I haven't had time to look at anything this week. Okay. Oh, I'm so. going to look. I'm going to look. So See, I, have... I got a spreadsheet. Oh, you Google printed documents it. Because I, I asked Dave, I want to know who I'm handing off to. Right. But if it's people I know. Um, Let me see if I have it. Beehive yeah. skeptics are handing it off to me, but there's no names. So, okay. So what is happening, people, is there is a, con a conference that's going to be online on Saturday and Sunday. And kind of a, a little kickoff or a freebie here is Global Skeptics in the Pub. It'll begin at 7 p.m. local time in New Zealand. And it'll travel all the way around the world. So you can tune in on Zoom. I included a link there in the, and we'll talk about this maybe when we come back from break. There's a link there and you can participate and you can share it with your friends and it is free. Some people will be solely online and you just do a cheers where you are. Other people will be having a Zoom in an actual pub somewhere and also online. Okay, here's the here's the grid, Janine. What time are you? I am um, at seven fifteen. Okay, so before you is the Beehive Skeptics. Yeah. Then you're you're the Orgonians for Science and Reason. Yeah. Then you pass off to Bay Area Skeptics, and Bay Area Skeptics hands off to Monterey County Skeptics. Monterey County Skeptics passes off to Sacramento Skeptics, and the final is back to New Zealand Skeptics. I thought they went back to Hawaii, but so we are on at ten at at twenty forty five. I, I like. I want to say I like the word Orgonian. It sounds like <laughs> something that Captain Kirk would fight. <laughs> so what time is twenty twenty uh twenty? I think it's eight eight forty five is like quarter to nine. Yeah, so quarter to nine. I think. Yeah. So, so yeah, so we'll be, theoretically, we'll be at a pub doing this. Do you want me to um, be there in the pub? Well, we don't have to. I I mean, that was sort of the idea. But, I'll do um, it. Well, um, as far as I know, we're the only ones doing it. So I if it's just. Some other groups were doing that, too. It, it would be fun. I mean, but... like in our area because i invited oh. people to go to london bridge which is a pub um at 6 30 but nobody's really responded i haven't checked this afternoon but okay so if um, it's 6 30 that's too long probably to hang out like to go there and do that and then join online my concern is the strength of the signal because they do yeah. have wi-fi at london bridge uh and they recommend as soon as you get on you make someone else a co-host in case you lose the signal but i can right. come at 6 30 hang out for an hour and then come home and do the broadcast at i think that's a, a good idea and yeah. then if there's anybody there i can just stay there and host it in person and then i can get home by well so you you would really actually be doing the the zoom part of it well, but we'll do it and I'll make you the yeah. host and I'll just right. do the technical park and part and you can right. be the. But I'm not going to take my computer over there. No, no, so. I will. I, I will. Um, OK, we'll do that. And then I yeah. have ideas for how to do like polls, like to keep people engaged. Like there's uh -huh. a little poll we could do, like to see where where in the world people are from. How okay, do they yeah. hear about this event? And it's like a little poll. They just mm -hmm. click on it and then everybody can see the results. Okay. Yeah. Made no, up that's little good. things like that. That Karen, sounds great. When does it start? No, it's already started. It's no, mm. it hasn't started yet. It starts my time midnight. So it starts see, at, for you guys. That would be your your one time zone away. So it'd start at one in the morning. Right. And it goes for 24 hours, scale, So you can get in and out anytime you want. Starting yeah, a, at 1 a.m. Friday uh -huh. morning. Tomorrow at 1900. Right. Well, that's different from 1 a.m. tomorrow. Right. right. So it's oh, so, so I, I printed out this uh, online, the UTC. Oh, you printed it out too. <laughs> UTC yeah, I printed it California. Too, so it starts <laughs> at 7 p.m. tomorrow. In, in New, New Zealand. Zealand. 
Well, which so is New 1900 time. our time. Okay. All right. Is that 1900 so tonight? So it's actually part of the the conference on tomorrow and yeah. Saturday. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. And it goes New Zealand skeptics, Australian, Hong Kong, Perth, Maharashtra, Superstition Eradication Committee, Kenya, Humanist, Skeptic EE, Malta Skeptics, South Africa. It's just really beautiful, you guys. I just wish I could put our times in for each of these, but I can't figure out UTC. Leonard, so there's a grid. There's a let. There's, there's a online. I you don't... put in UT uh, versus Oregon. They'll give you a printout here. I've got, all... I've got. I've got the printout, but I want to put over here my time for each of those things. Right, but there's a there's separate from the skeptics in the pub. It's called the time in California versus UTT. You can do that for Oregon también. No, oh, that's a better. That's probably a better graph than I. Once you figure out I one of the times, you should be able to figure out all the times. Just pencil it in. Well, that's what I was thinking, but yeah, just figure out one of them. And you should be okay. All right. Yeah, so they, should, they just go sequentially. Well, a couple of them are at the same time, looks like. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So Karen, I will see you there at 6 30. Yeah. And then then we can do whatever we need to do. And you can go home and I'll stay there or I'll go home or whatever. But yeah. Okay. How long did you invite people to come? 6 30. I made it for two for I think for 6 30 to hang on. Let me check. 6 30 to 9 30, 6 30, 8 30, something like that. That's a long run from 9 to 10, though. Well, right, but I will probably go home before that. Oh, okay. I am you might so want excited it. about tomorrow. I, I, just, I can't wait. <laughs> At 6 30 to 9 30, um, I, you know, probably not going to be there that long, but, you know, unless, I mean, the only other people who might come are Paul and Arlen, and they don't stay out that late. <laughs> so. Unless strangers show up, but we'll see about that. Yeah. Is there any way to change that time online and say, and put to like seven th or eight o'clock and then say, join us online thereafter or something? I could add join us online thereafter. I think it's on meetup though. And I have to say, I have to say, because it's going to be really late tonight before that we're done with trivia mm -hmm. and I need to go to bed so I can go to work tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, let's uh, come back from the break and, and let's see yeah, how, let's do, how that. we do. I have no idea what the other categories are going to be. So um, I have nothing Thanks, new. Thanks, Susan. Uh, I have nothing new to add, except that I've got two articles I just sent in, uh, one on the Santa Fe Skeptic Camp and one on an article that was in the Washington Post the other day about psychics. And Rob said that he had something that he had just turned in. What do you got, Rob? Oh, I interviewed uh, Kevin Fulton. Oh, yeah. One of the second speakers. Yeah, Kevin Volta. And uh, is anybody else? I'm sure Kyle has something. I, what was it you guys are doing? I remember on the on your last, I don't know which episode it was, if it's the latest or the one right before it is, is about dolphins. No, it's the bubbles that boats make, the, the sound agitates and it disrupts the, the marine mammals. Is that what it is? Oh, was? yeah. That was a good one. That's, That's the uh, last one I, I listened to. One back, yeah. Because on Data Skeptic, there are, uh, you know, ships that contribute to the noise profile of the ocean and that bugs all of the marine mammals. So there's some researchers trying to figure out ways to optimize how do you reduce the sound in the key areas. They have some interesting thing going around with like St what is it something in canada like right by toronto there's some island where everyone uh, will get paid to turn their engines down so it's one of those like hopeful things maybe we can save marine life this way you know numbers to the rescue uh but this week we have an episode out called weird communication it's all about these tree hopper bugs they it's communicate really good by, too <laughs> yeah they vibrate what they're standing on and their kin have a way of reading that vibration. So they have kind of a language based on like making vibrational noises. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's well, I had never sweet. heard of the bubble, the, you know, the noise making thing. That was fascinating to me when the guy brought it up and I thought, 
you know, even if they don't have the solution, at least we're now, at least I was aware of it. I it hadn't even been something I'd considered. Yeah. And I live next to the ocean. Literally Apparently wasn't on lot, your radar, right? There's not on my radar. Like whale sound has changed and evolved because the, the ocean is too noisy due to human beings. Oh. The new Ooh. form of pollution we're creating as a species. Hmm. Very interesting. You know, you know what I liked about this episode was learning that that daddy long legs lose a leg all the time and they still go on because <laughs> I was trying to move one the other day and I hurt its leg and I felt terrible. <laughs> and now Shame. I feel much better. <laughs> sure, yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Um I would feel bad causing a species a, a individual to lose a leg too, but they go on about life just fine. They adapt immediately, which is pretty impressive for such a tiny thing. Yeah. And, and, and Kyle, and I, the I was, implications were were interesting. I was away for the break. Did you did you mention that you're you're going to be part of Skeptical? Hadn't yet. Yeah, that's Saturday. I'm uh, amongst a number of great contributors on Saturday. I'll be talking about AI, obviously, but there's a great lineup that hopefully everyone's aware of by now. What's this AI stuff you're talking about? Huh? <laughs> artificial intelligence, or maybe the artificial general intelligence kind. We'll see. Artificial intelligence versus natural stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements that we need to bring up? Um, we have um, most of our roster for um, Oregonians for Science and Reason Skeptic Camp on August 23rd through 25th. And we have um, Kevin Fulta's pal, Steve Strauss from Oregon State University on uh, what the controversy about GMOs are really is really about. We have Daniel Loud from the University of Oregon speaking on AI. We have um, Ellen Peters, speaking on um, uh, illiteracy about numbers. We have a professor from the University of Oregon who teaches a course on pseudo um, archeology. span um, And we have Melanie Truck King and mm -hmm. we have Susan. So we may have one more speaker. Jane isn't here tonight because I think she's working on that. And then we'll have skeptics in the pub Friday night. And then Sunday, the next day, we're touring uh, the Loki Laboratory uh, at the University of Oregon, which is a huge laboratory built underground on the University of Oregon campus. Uh, it was built on bedrock on the campus to prevent any uh, vibrations, even from like air systems or anything, there can be no vibrations because they have such sensitive instruments. And so they have a full um, lab that will tour, and mostly and doing fun. nanotechnology really and scanning stuff. So, and we'll have dinner Saturday night someplace we haven't settled on a location yet really looking forward to this so Boy. getting back to skeptical um mm -hmm. i i provided two videos which you should see uh depending when you're watching one is a lightning talk and uh one is a promotional video for recovering from religion and i may also make an appearance depending how the game goes on skipperty oh oh cool so when you did the lightning one did you get a charge out of your uh a little bit yeah <laughs> but nothing compared to watching. the charge everyone else is going to get. Yeah, everybody else gets it. All right, so let's come back um, and can uh, I can I say something, oh, sure. Susan? Yeah, because not everyone was here during the break, and yeah. it is. Uh, let me let me let me do the little image here. Okay, here we go. So if no matter where you are, start. It's in the chat there. Also here, here you go. So if you go to skepticalcon.com slash global dash skeptics dash in the pub, the link is in the chat. 
So this is free. It's tomorrow. Deborah Workin here and Janine uh, Norm Norman. I forget your last name. Janine. Noma. Janine. Noma. Noma. Are hosting these events. Host Carol Carolyn also. Carolyn D as well. And oh, they're good. they're they're starting at uh in the chat. You'll see the links, the Zoom link and password. And this website, if you need to go to it, it's going to start at zero uh, UTC, which is seven o'clock in New Zealand. And it's just going to keep uh, going from place to place all around the globe. Please log in when you can and participate. It's, it'll be wonderful. And um, every group is doing it differently. But what a way to build community to also be aware that there are skeptics in South Africa and everywhere. So, um, so if you can log in at a different time than your group, you'll get a chance to meet new people. And maybe in a different language. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've asked how they're going to deal with that. language. All different languages, too. Yay. Polish so, up your Belgian or whatever. So what, I, so, so what I have done is I have printed up a little piece of paper that says um, greetings or hi or hello in different languages. And oh. I'm just going to hold it up and I'm going to maybe say something like I'm in California, whatever. And, uh, but I'm just going to hold it up to the little camera. By the way, Car Carolyn is off doing something to set up for this. So she says hello to everybody. Hello, Carolyn. <laughs> or Caroline. Sorry. Caroline. Caroline. <laughs> I'm sorry. She goes, oh, I've been mispronouncing it too. I thought it was Carolyn. I think it's a it's a regional thing. In New York, we would say Carolyn. So okay. So is the next person well, ready well, to go? Well. Alan, are you all are Vincent, are you all ready to go? Um, I'm I am all all set as set as hopefully I can be. But Vincent was gonna go before you, right? No. No, 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 no. He wanted to stick. I wanted that we moved me up so that he could stay around for it. Got it. He, Alan is he, on. For a little Vincent, while. Vincent is going to witness. Alan is on. Okay. I'm uh, going to it. Wow. What? Does okay. <laughs> so, all right. I, you bear with me. I, I'm not being, I'm doing my, not the optimal way of uh, cutting and pasting. I'm having trouble here. So hopefully I can do this expeditiously. So um, I will say this. Um, I, I guess, uh, you know, space travel and rockets and, and the whole thing, you know, SpaceX and, and all these guys have been really popular today. And I, I know how Rob would be very pleased with uh, with a category like this. Uh, but uh, here's my category today. And it's um, if I can if I can get it back here. All right. Uh, I'm working on it. I promise I'm working on it. All right. Uh, my category is, um, please, please, please copy. All right. And, and I go to here and my category is speaking of space, the piano. Okay. Click so, enter, click, click, click enter. On did the I not chat? enter? Oh, damn it. Okay. There the you go. Piano. Okay, I, I I think the scores ought to be, except for my team, ought to be re reasonably high. So uh, uh, we'll, but we'll we'll see. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to okay, show great so, confidence in my team. Woo. All right, so here we go. Uh, so uh, uh, let me do this because uh, I know the numbers aren't going to come over. So number one, um, let me go over here. Okay. Um, All right. The question is, what is the fun? Did you see the is the number there? Yes. 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 Okay. What is the fundamental difference between a harpsichord and a piano? That is number one. The kind okay. of pants you wear when you play them. That's right. <laughs> okay. uh, Obviously, the fundamental difference is they're spelled very differently. Okay. <laughs> number two. Let's see what happens here. Uh, number two, and I go over to here, and I go to here, and I do this, and I paste. Does and it work without play-by-play, okay. play, Al? Hold well on. Done. 
no, hang on a second. So it, it's the number, of course, is wrong. So let me see if I can fix that. Okay. Uh, number two. He is generally considered the inventor of the modern piano. It's one of these four names. Frederick von Steinway, Louis Comte de Mesure, Bartholomew Christofori, Hans Schlockenhammer are, is considered the inventor of the <laughs> modern piano. No. All right, yeah, that's right. All right, <laughs> so here we go. Uh, no, no, number three. Uh, okay, I'm going to copy and I'm going to go over to here and go to here and um, I'm going to do this. And let me see if I can't get this on here. All right, three. All right, here we go. All right, so here we go. Number three. What is considered the year the piano was invented? And I'm giving you a nice, good, wide, uh, wide space here. Uh, plus or minus 50 years. When was the modern, or the year the piano was invented? Mm. All right. Um, all right. Let's see. That was number what? That was number three. So here we go. Number four. Uh, oops, oops, come on. You can do this. All right, number four. You can. I can do this. I know. Number four. Hang on. Four with a dot and a space. All right. During the mid 20th century, there were three screws drilled into the stage at Carnegie Hall, known as the Horowitz screws. What was their purpose? And okay, Leonard is jumping to the uh, to the board there. Okay, uh, that was number four. Okay, so we need a number five. I promise this will be done by midnight. Okay, mm -hmm. number five. Here and here and here and here and here. What did I say this was? Number five? Five, yeah. Okay. Um, okay, number five. Come on, let's go. Okay, now it doesn't want to go. There it is. Okay, modern piano hammers are made from tightly compacted wool. And sometimes, and I just learned this, sometimes rabbit fur. What was used to cover the hammers in the earliest pianos prior to the use of wool? All right. Uh, all right. Here we go. That was five, so we're at number six. Numeral cease. Uh, mm -hmm. And this, and this. This, 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 and this is number. What do we say? I said this was number. Uh, this is number six. Yeah. All right. Now let me. All right. It's the one after five, though. That's right. Hey, give me a break. <laughs> number six. Uh, vertical pianos, as opposed to grand pianos, are classified according to their size from the floor to the ceiling, from the floor to the top of the cabinet. Place the following in order from smallest to largest. Mm -hmm. An upright, a spinet, a studio, and a console. So you've mm -hmm. got to get them from the, from the shortest to the tallest. These are generally the names we use. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> All right. No, number Zeben. Uh, and let's go to here. Oops. Say That's no, the no, stay awake. Come on. All right. Whoops. <laughs> um, trying. I'm sorry. Do him a All funny right. voice. That way he'll. All say right. It. Um, what happened here? Uh, shoot. What happened? Sorry. Um, I'm just looking here. I'm trying. I'm sorry. This, 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 what did I say? This is number seven. 
Seven. Yeah, it should, yeah. it should uh, be. I don't know. There it is. Okay. Number seven. In 1973, an international convention was made. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Let me just see if I, it's, I got screwed up here. Uh, okay. And convention was made making uh, an exception that allowed, I, I'm sorry, it's, if you mis misprinted there. In 1973, okay. an international convention made an exception allowing modern piano key tops to continue being made oh. from ivory. Ooh, True wow. or false? Okay, does that make sense the way I've got yes. it there? Sorry. Yes, it does. Okay. All right, that was seven. Let's do... Players do... Mud. All right. And this is eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So here we go. Um, in 1958, 23 year old American pianist Van Cliburn shocked the musical world, shocked, mm -hmm. I say, the musical world by winning top prize at this prestigious competition. Mm -hmm. One of these four the Royal Albert International Competition. Beijing People's Competition, the DDR, German Democratic Republic, Grand Piano Competition, International Tchaikovsky Competition. All right. And here we go. Numero nine. All right. and i better correct something here okay number nine in a symphony orchestra to what section does the piano belong for rob the choices are woodwind <laughs> brass percussion strings okay for and... everybody else what choices do we get yeah I just wanted to know. <laughs> <laughs> I really I should do that. Okay. And let's get number 10 out of the way here. Uh, do, 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 copy. And Okay, number 10. Number 10. In an episode of what TV series was an upright piano famously catapulted 200 feet to the amazement of actors, extras, crew, and audience? Truly one of the great moments in TV history. And there you have the piano. Yay! And our long national nightmare comes to an end. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no it's not i still have to do the answers yet. oh that's right yeah never mind <laughs> well done Yay. alan well what done happened? what happened Those to you good. have fun good two uh. hello team all uh, right well i can answer them all can you oh, nice. awesome you want me to? No. <laughs> well, one's a freebie. Is it? What is it? Yeah, different? plucked I instead of hammered. I was thinking that. Yeah. You're supposed to go to team four. Okay, so who is generally considered the venter? Oh, yeah. Uh, right. Fair question. Susan, do you belong here? Team three? Alan, Alan wasn't. Ramiro's doing the category next round. You're in the wrong category. Okay, you're in the wrong room. Get a bit. The gym? Oh, yeah. What Jim was saying, maybe he would leave on the. Uh, a higher sound. Oh, Sorry, everybody went into the wrong room. But it has a higher <laughs> sound. There are no low cells. Like a piano goes from low all the way to high. 
Do you, so you think the fundamental difference is the, is the octaves it does? Yeah, that's my my. I don't know what you guys would think, but that's what I think. I was thinking it was the way the strings were were manipulated. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but the harpsichord, you you are um, pressing like the ivories too. Yeah, but I think it right. The ivories don't directly. There's a connection mechanism in the piano which forces right. the hammer and hit the strings. I think in a harpsichord, something plucks the string when you hit the keys. No one, no one else has heard that. Yeah, no. Have you Susan heard that? Yes. Susan said yes. Yeah, Susan, that's sounds, piano for years. that sounds plausible. Susan's agreeing with me. Okay. okay. So what do I put as an answer? Uh, the, that the, the strings are, are struck versus plucked. Okay. That's pretty much the only one I know. Well, no, I might know two. I, I have a musical composition on my <laughs> iPod called uh, Christopher's Dream, and it's only piano playing. And I presume oh. that's because Christopher was the inventor of the piano. Otherwise, oh, I don't know why sense. it would be named that. Oh, so it's Bartholomew Christopher? Yeah, it, it's like it's like from an album called Christopher's Dream and the several things on it. It's like, okay, why else would it be called that? So, uh, but guess, I've never heard of any of these other people. Well, Steinway, I know, but. Okay, what is considered the year? No idea. Anybody. Well, Mozart had the harpsichord. They didn't have a piano, and Mozart so. was in the eighteen uh, hundreds, late eighteen hundreds. Is that right? They were wearing the powdered wigs and everything, so that would have been in the seventeen hundreds. So it would have been after that. So probably eighteen. We put eighteen thirties or something. Eighteen what? Thirties. Good guess. Uh, it is a guess. Anybody uh, any idea about these screws into the stage? I've never heard. Oh, of that's probably because they would they I, would put it so when you're pounding on the piano, it doesn't move forward as you're pounding. It's like nails. I actually have heard of that, but I could not, for the life of me, remember why that was. But I have heard of that. Some that, people get very aggressive with the pianos, you know. So, so are are they to tie the piano down to? Well, to to like brace it so that whenever you're pushing on it pushing you're not you're pushing against these nails that are there that are okay so the purpose is to secure piano then yeah keep it from moving too much when you're pounding on it yeah all right secure piano okay uh um, five five i just got guesses i don't know anybody ever uh, heard of this how do you say the maybe hmm? they use the cat for from the low from the um I was thinking left over like cats rope. when they took out their guts to take the violin strings. I was thinking like rope because that was very commonly used for lots of things like hemp or you know like what like a rope like a, a like a strings that are twine yeah or something like that some some kind of fabricy stuff that's been used forever for I mean we've had ropes forever. I would think that would be soft and it would be accessible. It's um, it could be just as good as like wool. I don't know, uh, rabbit fur, but I was thinking that would be it, or it could be. I don't think it'd be any kind of vegetation, like a plant leaf or anything. I, I, well, I, I just wrote down cotton because cotton and wool kind of. Okay. I don't, I don't know. It, it could be. It could be what you're saying, Susan. Twine or rope or something, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I really have no idea. But what is the rope made out of? That's yeah, that that like that hemp or rope or twine. Yeah, it's made out of uh, like a whatever they make. <laughs> well, I think, I think they used to make it out of hemp, and then later yeah. on, as we have progressed, and well, so hemp hemp might be the good answer then, because that would be the material. Okay. I'll put him. Uh, all right. Anybody any idea of these names of pianos? I think the spinet might have been the smallest. Studio really would probably be the biggest. So spinet would be one. Oh, it's not working. Darn it. Smallest to largest. So smallest. 
Which which do you think was the largest? I would think the studio would be larger than a console. Because well, a console kind of makes it sound like it's something you sat at your... Well, no, if you remember those old TVs, <laughs> you had a console TV and they were like in a cap. So it sounds, console sounds big. Studio sounds like it might be the next smallest <laughs> and operate console. So they're in the correct order right now? No, no. Yeah. <laughs> so never got, got, right, got upright heat for some reason heat. Oh, upright. upright. Okay. Upright would be the biggest. Yeah, might be the biggest, maybe console Oops. studio than spin it. I'll be right back. Because I think I've seen people, pl I mean, movies were yeah, like just, just, playing just, and spin it. Just cut, spin and, cut, and move, cut and paste them in the right order instead of trying to put numbers. It's not working. Oh, all right. So move, move, cut and paste, spin it to the top, above upright. And and what are we saying a second then? Upright? I got no clue. They may be studio, but then I'm really guessing up on the rest. So spinets. Yeah. And which Spinet. one is Spinet? And I'm guessing studio. Studio. Uh, I don't know, maybe. Then upright and then console. Yeah. Just just a wild guess. And yeah, Susan upright, made me write about the and other. Then upright and then console. Okay. All righty. We'll see. Uh, so seven, do you think it's true or false? Can they still make uh, keys out of ivory or not? No. <laughs> All right. Well, so it's false. probably false. 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 So. false. Okay. You got seven twice there for some reason. Uh, yes. That eight. was my, that was because it was, the question was put down properly uh, uh -huh. second time. Anybody idea about why it would be shocked that Van Cliburn won any of these things? Scroll, scroll it up. We can't, uh, can we see all the answers? I'm, I'm looking at the chat. I don't know what's going on there. One, two, three. Oh, yeah, you got this one is false, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And this one is... So anybody have any idea? And why would it be shocking for him to win any of those? Uh, you know, Maybe he... Well, he was 23 years old. Maybe because he was American. Yeah, but what would make one of them more... Or he just, just he happened to win one of those and he just made the others up or something. Well, yeah. Royal, I think the Royal Albert is British. Um, All right. Yeah, I look, don't know. Look, look at his name. Van Cleburn. It's probably Jewish. And so the DDR, German Democratic Republic, probably because of that. Mm, yeah, but this is <laughs> this is like 15 uh, years after the war. So I, I don't know. That yeah, uh, that's, yeah, that's probably true. Oh, my God. She's calling us back. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah. All right. Put, put what you said, Vincent. DDR. Okay. Just, yeah. I'm just going to wild guess. Nine is, I don't know. Is it percussion or strings? It's it strings. Ain't it's strings. It's strings. Okay. okay. I mean... If you remember your answer to the first question, you yeah, were about yeah, strings. I know, but I actually, I actually asked my wife that, and she knows a little bit more about it than I do, and she said not strings, so which is really weird. But I yeah. wish her to the piano be referred to as part of the string section. Yeah, put str put strings. I, I, yeah, I uh, did. I if you think that's true too. Yeah. Uh, all right, uh, episode TV series upright piano famously catapulted. Oh come on. What would that have been? All I can think of are those two guys who uh, um, I can't remember their, their show's name. 
they always tried out this this all this Seinfeld? stuff. Seinfeld? No, no. It was a nonfiction show. Oh. But I don't think it would have had actors. Catapulted extras, actors, crew, and audience. Yeah. An audience. Um, Hi, everybody. Okay, let's see. Number oh, up. Right room's closing. I, I can't believe she closed this fast. We're not even through these. Number 10, TV show where a, a piano was catapulted. Oh, that is um, Monty Python. All right, great. Oh, oh Monty Python. Monty Python. Also did a, I think they also did a cow. If not, it's Northern Exposure. Station. You know what? It's Northern Exposure. Oh, see, 15 seconds, Susan. Now you're changing it. Northern Exposure? Yeah. Do you have any idea about Van Clifford? We're done. Five seconds. Closure. Wow, Alan, thanks for giving us all that extra time. Woo. All right. Uh, okay, I'm like that. Okay, uh, I hope that was okay for you guys. For, for, um, for, first, you made Vincent stay for that, and then you rushed him through it. I don't think Vincent's appreciating it. <laughs> oh, I thought I, you guys. I thought you guys were only at the end. Did you have Did you have enough time? No, not we're really. Done. But it but doesn't. It doesn't we, matter because we're not going to win. Doesn't matter. It's an interesting we, round, Alan. It's not exactly my forte, but. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, all right. So here we go with that. Uh, with answers. Please. Um, I like that. Uh, I guess I should get to the answers, shouldn't I? Here, um, I, I'm impressed with uh, with your stick to itiveness, uh, uh, Rob. <laughs> in, in number one. Um, okay, so uh, here we go. And whoops, here we go. We do this. And oops, sorry, I've got to get to the hat. What are you just doing? Play now? the PowerPoint. What are you I, doing now? No, I'm. I just. I, you gotta. You gotta bear with me here. No. You, so just read the answers, and you can paste <laughs> them all in at one time later. Um, Susan, <laughs> it, can you go over the next two weeks of um, trivia? Well, somebody's <laughs> doing everything. We have right everything now. next week is full. Okay. Great. Okay. The difference number one: a harpsichord jack plucks the string; a piano oh. hammer strikes the string. Okay, and that's where the name piano forte comes from, because uh, on a harpsichord, the only way to change volume, to change dynamics, is by layering a lot of different notes together. On a piano, for the first time, you could you were striking the hammer, and if you struck the hammer harder, it got louder, softer, it got softer. So piano being soft, forte being louder, strong. Oh. So there you go. Okay. Oh. I know you're fascinated. Okay, here we go. Um, Thank you. All right. Yeah, you know what? Let me, I'll read it. I'll read, the, I'll just read it the end. None of them are Thank very you. long. Okay. So number two is Bartholomew Cristofori. He was generally credited with inventing the modern, the modern piano. The year the, the uh, one the one album I own of piano music is called Cristofori's Dream, which is why I got that one. There you go. Uh, Karen, you were right on and you got talked out of it. Um, oh. uh, it was invented, it's considered to have been invented in 1700. Oh, wow. I got it exactly right. Did we get a bonus? No, but I can. Sorry, Karen. Okay. <laughs> All right. Number four. To, uh, it was really interesting what everybody put down, but uh, uh, to, I'll tell you the story behind this one. Uh, uh, to, the, to what it does, it marks the the spot where the legs for Horowitz's piano were to be placed for his recitals, not to hold it in place, but this is where they wanted to, to put locate it. Because when he used to get, when he first, whenever he would come to do a solo recital, he would sit down at the piano at rehearsal and he'd make the guys move the piano around till he found the spot that he thought was just right. And, the, and they kept doing that. So finally, someone came up with the idea that they would put the screws in exactly where the feet went. So the next time he came, they just rolled the piano right to that spot. And of course, he's sitting there and says, no, that's not good. You got to move around. So they moved all around the stage. They eventually found the exact spot that he was happy with, which was the exact same spot that he felt the sound was at. And so they and other artists that would come to play recitals at Carnegie Hall would request um, Horowitz's screws because they knew that would be the best place to get the best sound in the on the stage. Sorry, guys, I had the wrong. And some of you got the uh, number uh, four correct. It was in fact leather. Hey, 
Oh, number five. It was number five. five. Number five. Number five. Leather right. was number five. Uh, number six, smallest is spinet, then a console, oh. a studio or studio upright, then upright. So you have to have Wait. it in that order. Um, the wow. num number seven, it was false. Uh, uh, um, so oh, I hope that uh, 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 you guys figured that out uh, because there were some around that time, there were some countries that were just coming around to finally banning it. But uh, it was true. You could not. It was a problem even for like string players who are uh, like uh, violinists and stuff who had uh had uh ivory on the tips of their of their instruments some they had it was a long time where some countries would not let you even walk in with an old instrument that had uh had uh, uh ivory the Ooh. answer for the um for number eight the competition was the international tchaikovsky competition and the big deal you got to remember the time these guys were these guys were rock stars the uh 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 the 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 classical musicians and uh van Cliburn made a big splash because it was the first tchaikovsky competition and what they did is they um they created this thing was shortly after a sputnik and they so they, they felt that they were the leaders in technology and in science now they wanted to show that they they wanted to show off that they were leaders in the arts as well so it was a major shock, and this took place in Moscow. It was a major oh. shock. It was, no, it might, it might have been uh, it might have been Lenin, Leningrad, but it was a major shock that an American in the height of the Cold War came yeah. over and won this competition. Uh, number nine, it is a percussion instrument. Yes, there's a bunch of strings, but the hammers are yeah. pounding on the strings. And if you ever see the uh, the uh, Tom and Jerry cartoon. Where that they're being, you know, uh, uh, Tom, was it was a Thomas chasing Jerry under inside the piano. If you ever, if you remember, if you will ever see that, the piano is actually upside down because the hammers don't hit from underneath, go up, or, or don't go down, hitting the strings. They go up. So, mm -hmm. but but it's still a funny cartoon. Never, oh. I, I'm surprised. Is it percussion? Was the I answer was... percussion? Yes. Yeah. Percussion. Right. And Karen, did you get number ten? I did. Oh, okay. What did what, you say? Northern Exposure. Okay, I wasn't sure if you were getting there. Yes, oh. Northern Exposure. You oh. got to look this up. It is an absolute class. Yeah. First of all, it's a great show, but you got to look. It's just a, a great... Uh, they wanted uh, to it, do it a cow, a but they couldn't do a cow because that was done in Monty Python. Exactly, exactly what happened. It, it, came, it came to be like a second before just right as... Yeah, there, yeah. there you go. So uh, let me just... Um, yeah, Ron got it, not me. Well, that's okay. Uh, oh. Ron's entitled to get these once in a while. Uh, yeah, we didn't get it. We took we put myth buses. I, yeah, I guessed I, I, yes, that, I heard Kevin. That. I guessed that. Yeah. yeah, I couldn't come up with anything else. <laughs> so here, here, here the um, or here how it's the made. Answers. The, the numbers aren't there, but the, here, here they are. Um, okay. Anyway, so the, everything you needed to know about a piano. That was very interesting. How many I'll keys on a me. piano? Uh, it depends. Uh, for most for for most pianos, it's eighty eight. Okay, so let's there... do our scores here. So Republicans and Band Aids, what do you got? Four. Hey, all right. <laughs> uh, Donald Duck. Eight. <laughs> Such enthusiasm. Sad. I know. <laughs> Sad. Uh, ten. Yay! Yay. Wow. Um, wow. Oh, honey, wake up. We're doomed. We'll never make it. Eight. And maxi pads on this. Nine. Eight. Good. That's yeah. good. Okay, so now I'm supposed to go into room three this time. Okay, because we, we reversed you guys. Okay. Do, um, I do apologize. Now it's my... Romero's turn. Uh, uh, thank you, Vincent, for ahead. hanging around. Thanks for hanging out. Bye, Vincent. Vincent. And, and sorry. Bye, Vincent. See you, Vincent. Good night, Vincent. Good night, Vincent. Good night, Good night, Vincent. Good night. Be well. All right. So, uh, yeah, the the category is uh, teams of the Tour de France. <laughs> <laughs> 
There's 22 oh. teams in the Tour de France, named 10 of them uh, Manor Rules. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it sounds very tell, familiar. Tell me this is not a category. He did it already. Yeah, uh, but you did this before. Yeah. Oh, no, he didn't do teams before. He did countries. He did nations. Yeah, the nation. Yeah, yeah no. So, uh, yeah, I, I I had a bone fracture, so I uh, I thought of making the category bones. Dim bones, dim bones, dim. Is it is it bones, or are you are you really like? Did you really pick team names for the tour? No, I was just kidding about that category. <laughs> okay, thank God, because I was like, no, every, it's going to be zeros all the way down except for us. <laughs> okay, so um, <clears throat> let me copy and paste some numbers. Uh, so number one uh, is an, I think it's a give me, how many bones do adult humans typically have? Don't assume. <laughs> no no plus or minus just to get another number yeah he no thinks minus. we all know this rob this i know it <laughs> i know what they told me in middle school uh no, change them, well so. is, is it the male or the female because you know the one less rib thing <laughs> <laughs> what's the category called that's a now? myth uh bones boners <laughs> no. i doubt that's true uh, oh, number, I heard him wrong. Number two <laughs> is uh, what is a green stick fracture? Number three, what is uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Coming comminuted. Okay, comminuted fracture. Number four, uh, this unregulated procedure in India uses distraction orthogenesis and has gained popularity because of hopes of better marriage and career prospects. The procedure was banned in China in 2016. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, number five, there are two types of cells involved in helping to repair bone fracture. One adds bone matrix, while the other one dissolves the bone. Name one of the two types of cells. So if you name one of them, you get a point. Uh, number six, in the fossil record around 500 million years ago, we see evidence of the first mineralized structures in the vertebrae lineage. It is from these structures that motor, modern bones evolve. What were these structures? Number seven, human bones have living cells in, entrapped in the mineral bone matrix. This type of bone is called osteoporosis osteocytic bone. In a 2021 study, a study in a 2021 study found evidence that the first osteocytic bone evolved for what purpose? Number eight, there are two types of bone marrow. Infants are born with primarily one type. And as we grow into adulthood, more and more of the first type of bone marrow turns into the second type until the age of 20 or so, when the bones contain primarily the second type of bone marrow. Name one of the two types of bone marrow. Mm. And then number Do you nine. need first name and last name? <laughs> uh, just first name is fine. Charlie. Number <laughs> nine, what is the, what is Fibrodysplasia ossificans progressiva. And then number 10, this alternative therapy's claim is that it helps increase the speed of bone healing. Uh, it has gained popularity in recent years, and there is very little evidence that this helps uh, treat nonians or delayed bone healing, name the therapy. Any questions? Mm -mm. All right, I'll send everyone to the rooms. Good category. We've never had this Thank one you. before. Okay, now I'm in the right room. Now you're in the right room. Okay. Um, 
206. You know that or you think that? Or guess I know that. that. Okay. What's a green strip fracture? Uh, it's a... It's... Faith, you're muted. Am I... No, oh, faith is me. Yeah, it's a crack on one. It's basically like a partial fracture on one side of the bone that doesn't go all the way through. And it's generally goes along the length of the bone. Yeah. A, com a comminuted fracture is a fracture that breaks through the skin. No, it's a multiple, multiple break in one bone. The... Uh, but the general no the compounds fracture is the one that breaks through the skin. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So what is the answer? More than one break in a single bone. Okay. So I think four is that uh, foot binding. That's originally what I was thinking, but I don't know how it. I got confused because India. Yeah, I don't know it from India, but banned in China makes sense, although it seems a little was, late to be banning it. I thought it was banned in the 70s. Who would hope? <laughs> so maybe it's not foot binding. Because I don't think it would improve your career. I could see it improving your marriage. Is that your lack of imagination, though? <laughs> no, it's just distraction. Um, I was thinking it would be making you taller. Like with the hooks on the neck? Or like a neck pulling thing? They do that traction. In Africa. Yeah, traction. traction is supposed to make um is supposed to make things longer. Oh okay. yeah, traction. Make a person taller. Yeah, so that's why I'm thinking it makes a person taller. Because when you put somebody in a traction device, you're supposed to you're so you're holding the bones to make them like heal and okay, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I would think that they would use that in the legs because mostly when they try to do leg lengthening, they'll break the bones and let them reheal together. And this would be using a traction device to let the broken bones heal. I have heard of such a thing. Uh, when a child gets the bends in one bone, it stops growing. So they use this procedure to make the shorter bone equal to the length yeah. of the longer bone. Yeah. So the two types of cells involved in helping to repair a bone fracture. Are they osteophytes? Maybe. Good guess. I don't even have a guess. T cells? No, T cells are used to fight viruses. That's what I would think it would be an osteophyte. That word certainly fits. Mm -hmm. How would you spell that? Um, uh, as noted in number seven. Yeah. Oh, oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay. What? No, an osteophyte. No, osteo bone spur. <laughs> Is a, a osteocytic bone? You're talking about a bone spur? No, uh, an osteophyte is a bone spur with okay. a pH. It's a C C Y is. All right, then what what is the bone marrow then? Or the bone matrix? Could it be a white or red blood cells? No. Because <laughs> mm -mm. red blood cells are utilized for carrying oxygen. White blood cells fight off back are are used for fighting off viruses. Etc. Right, but so, red, the red, only cells I know. <laughs> red blood cells are created in the bone marrow. Yeah, but they wouldn't be used at all to help. Well, uh, could it be a lymphocyte? Mm. Or os? Because I'm trying to think. 
I mean, you're saying words that sound right on point to me. Mm -hmm. We can come back to it. Um, in fossil record more than 500 million years ago, we see evidence of the first mineralized structures in the vertebra lineage. It's from these structures that modern bones evolved. What are these structures? Is it the spine? What do you think, Bill? <laughs> uh, I'm thinking in terms of uh, spinal material, uh, like the spines of a uh, uh, of a sea urchin, maybe. Um, so, like an exoskeleton, or it's an an endos first endoskeleton pieces. I don't know. Okay. Put endoskeleton pieces. And the two types of bone. Okay, human bones have living cells entrapped in the mineral bone matrix. This type of bone is called osteocytic bone. A 2021 study found evidence that the first osteocytic bone evolved for what purpose? Could it be to create a spine? Seems fitting. What do y'all think? Um, to create the matrix of the of the uh, of the bone. To uh, make bone matrix. Yeah, you know, that that's yeah. It would be what. Uh, But what did it? What purpose did it evolve for? To make make the bone sturdy, okay. like hardness. Yeah. Okay. Number eight, the two different types of bone marrow. Oh, it's um, number eight. That's when when you give birth, they have um. Uh, there's a lot of, in fact, I think this is just in the Washington Post. They're talking about these people who are collecting their children's spinal. It's a spinal they're, fluid. They're collecting cord blood. They're, they're cord collecting, blood. But what they're collecting is the stem cells that are located in there. Because you don't have to get it from an embryo. I remember reading about this, like, Decades ago at work. Uh, huh? Would you it say it doesn't that? have anything to do with that core blood? Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know then. Well, no, that's and when you have a marrow transplant, uh, the marrow comes out and it's two two colors. There's the red, which creates the the red blood cells and then there's the yellow you and you don't know which is which in terms of what what they do well i know number nine which is it is where your muscles tendon and ligaments turn to bone oh, oh yes okay well done because I there's also the osteogenesis imperfecta, which it that's the other ones where the bones will fuse after they break so many times. But fibro is a soft tissue, and ossificans means they ossify, progressiva. So basically, fibrous tissues ossifying progressively. And number ten. I want to say cold therapy. It's either heat or cold, one or the other. I, I think, think it's cold therapy. I think you're right, yeah. Because my mom, my mom's doctor's office keeps, they have like 
a cold therapy unit where you'll put the cold water and it will run. Are you talking through. about cryotherapy? It's not cryotherapy. It's called cold therapy. Cryo is taking it too cold. <laughs> this okay, is so cryo is freezing. For number nine, did you put fiber fibromyalgia or? No, it's it's where your muscles, tendons, and ligaments turn to bone. Number nine. progressively yes but that's what we said is basically fibro dysplasia basically fibro is the muscles tendon and ligaments the soft tissues of the skeletal system ossification means turning to bone so ossificans and then progressiva progressively okay so we want cold therapy for number 10 yeah we have that's everything uh we still need number eight you're almost done then. just number eight yeah, we need to figure out what types of bone marrow. It, it's well, a two-minute delay, so. so. I mean, the two types of bone marrow are defined by their colors. I mean, there's it's red and yellow. Red and yellow bone marrow? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hi, what are you doing down there? <laughs> You're just looking at me. Yeah, I was telling them, Susan, he's probably going to have to have some some of all the rest of his teeth or most of them taken out next week when he has a dental cleaning because he is likely allergic to his own teeth. What? Is that yeah, a thing? It is. It's, I forget exactly what the term is, but if you Google it, it's a very common thing that can happen to dogs and cats as they get older. They get I've allergic. never heard of that. They get allergic to the tartar. Okay, now that could make some sense. Yeah, okay. So, what? I'm talking about you. <laughs> Lucky he's, on, he's on anti-inflammatories, gabapentin, kitty morphine, but I got that saved for next week. I'm sure yeah, Romero is like right there with. He doesn't know how much the vet has. Oh, no, no, it's always. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, because you cuddle with me when I sleep at night. So that's why you get the stuff. You just lack the brain cell. Okay, so we're going to do white and yellow or red no, and yellow? No, that's red and red yellow. Red. And the, the red is basically the red, red blood cell stem cells. I wonder if the fact that kids have two different types of bone marrow, that's why they are susceptible to more types of leukemia. Hmm. We're all done. Right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's probably okay. Very yeah. interesting, Romero. Why'd you pick this category this week? Was there something? Fracture the flick. I have a oh, oh, fracture. yeah, that makes sense. Okay, Durr. how's that? How's that doing? Uh, still taking some time to heal. Still painful to walk. <laughs> Want to try the cold therapy? <laughs> <laughs> Did you take your metho or meloxicam or whatever it is, the steroid? Today, yeah. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. I think you should keep him from walking or running or whatever he needs to be. He's, he's allowed. He's allowed to bear weight. He's cooking me food. He made some really awesome cheese and potato tacos earlier. Mm. It, it helped me on my run because I was texting him going, this is bullshit. Trump's face is all over the TVs. I still have four miles I have to run and I want tacos <laughs> and I want them now. And this is not fair. And he told me one of us has to run. So I guess I guess it's you. Yeah, I get to run 15 miles on Saturday morning. Well, have fun. <laughs> I will. It's Sounds like a personal problem to me. I, it's a I very never, expensive personal problem. I never enjoyed running for running's sake. I had played soccer in high school, which includes a lot of running, but... Uh, Running just for the sake of running, no thanks. No, there's nothing that sounds enjoyable <laughs> well, we to we evolved me. to do. To run ridiculously long distances. And I'd rather play stuff. dead. <laughs> I'd rather what? <laughs> but then I, I get to do that and eat all the food later and feel really great about feeding the endorphins. <laughs> and it's like better than drugs. It's like alcohol or cocaine. You could go run five miles. Uh, 
Well, my other sport was one or Okay, answers. All right, let's see how how uh how well we know our bones. We all have them in our bodies. We're all we had to count all of ours. We didn't know, so we just counted <laughs> Ramiro. <laughs> um, there's there's a uh, Kathy Reich's novel, that is to say, Bones novel, entitled 206. Bill, he hasn't oh. given the answer yet. <laughs> yeah, so I'll start with the answers. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, 206 Bones. Yay. All right, Janine. Excellent. We had to memorize them in high school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All 206 of them. Mostly. Is there a plus minus on this? Uh, no. Zero. Yeah, zero. Okay. <laughs> All right, number two and three are here. So uh, the green stick fracture is that it's fracture on one side, but not on the other. So it's kind yeah. of like... Uh, I, well, like a green branch that is hard to break because it, it bends. If we said like a hairline fracture, does that does that would that cover? It's a it? No, uh, yeah, it has to because it's specific really? to to so children get it a lot because their bones are softer. And so Actually, they, we didn't, they, Alan. Alan, we didn't say that. That was the next one. We said lengthwise fracture. Yeah, that's what we said. That's what we said. Lengthwise then, for sure. I guess that would be the first one, linear. Yeah. Well, so, and then the comminuta or whatever, however it's pronounced, is where the bone breaks, uh, you know, in more than more than two places. Yeah. Or, or oh, more than wow. one place. Sorry. Um, Ramiro, do you know if a bone breaks like that, that comminuted or whatever, does the bone dissolve and go into the body and re reheal, or does it heal together again? Do you know? I don't know. Yeah. It hurts. Yeah, we usually, actually, they usually with, pin things together. Usually with those fracture, usually with those fractures, Karen, they're performing surgery to put back the fragments together of what they can. And they uh, pin it. Pins yeah. and stuff. Yes, pins, rods, sometimes uh, metal, what else? Dark, dark tape, yeah. duct tape, and and spit and band aids, <laughs> bailing wire. And depending, bailing wire. and depending on the severity and where it is, they may choose to amputate the limb. <gasps> wow. Just All right. Uh, number it's like a four parachute is didn't open. Length, length lengthening surgery. Oh. Okay. All right. Uh, we we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Wow. That looks painful. Yeah. It looks stupid. <laughs> and that too. It does. Number five is osteoblast or osteoclast. You can, you can, I accept either of those two. What was the question? I'm sorry. Five. What was the question again on that one? Two the types of was, cells. Uh, there, there are two types of cells involved in helping to repair bone fracture. One adds bone matrix, while the other one dissolves the bone. Okay. Mm. Didn't know that. Still don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> we got osteo, but didn't get the second part. Oh, wow. Give us credit. No. Ah. Osteo is very, it's a common. Shush, track. I knew that. <laughs> it's well, a bone word. It's a yeah, bone word. I'm at the beginning of words. Uh, it sounds like six. a weapon that Mr. Spock would use. Uh, osteoblast. <laughs> so number six oh. is teeth or odontotes or sort of protective shielding. So the oh. teeth. I didn't okay. say that, that I would sense. Say Two of them. Nice but, way for my uh, team is the worst. I have four. So I mean, I'm stuff. So yeah, so those kind of like form on the outside of the body, or kind of sort of the inside. Uh, In that seven. particular fish, that was the fish that. Hey, started. Romero. What what was the question again? For number six, what was the question? Number six is uh, the like the first types of mineralized structures. Uh, what was the what were the structures? Four. Uh, yeah, so that's like little bones on the, on that fish. Um, the spines from a sea urchin be uh, considered that? I don't know. I don't know if that. I I, I think that's. Go this is more on 
vertebrates. The garbage out though. Maybe. <clears throat> Number seven, uh, they store minerals for later use. Oh, oh. Is that again? Uh, so that one was um, like the the bones that contain living cells and trap in the matrix and the bone matrix. What what was the evidence that this study found for for the purpose when they first mm. evolved? Interesting. Um, so so like, bone healing. So that would be. You said bone healing. Find, the study didn't find evidence for that. You know, uh, like the. So basically, yeah, the like these little guys, the uh, deposit bone matrix, uh, become entrapped in the matrix. Like they entrap themselves in the bone matrix, and then they just stay there forever. And we're all trapped in the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> all right, number eight. So red marrow and yellow marrow is the answer. Hey. What about raw marrow? Raw marrow. Uh, what did we end up putting? Stem cells. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, number nine is a genetic disease where the muscles and tendons and ligaments turn into bone. <gasps> so this. Oh my god! Oh, I think oh, we got this, one. This is Harry Raymond Eastlack. That's his skeleton after he died. And so I found this interesting because in the Wikipedia entry, it said at the age of four, he injured his left femur. The tissue around the injury began to turn into bone. At the age of 15, his jaw became fused and he could no longer eat solid food. And, you know, he yeah. got all these things. So they kept performing invasive surgeries. And every time they damaged the muscle tissue, it turned, started turning into bone. Oh. And so oh. he, he developed like a horror and, movie. Yeah, yeah, it feels like a sci-fi illness. That's so freaking. He died due to being unable to cough properly, and then at the time of his death, he could only move his oh. eyes, lips, and tongue. Oh. Good job, Cindy. We broke the set out. Just sounded that like something that was hardening. That were osseo, whatever. Mm. And then number ten is called the bone growth stimulator, mm. and it uses electricals, electrical. I guess electro electromagnetic waves too. Is it ultrasonic waves? There's some versions that uh I use ultrason ultrasonic stuff. So I guess I'll accept ultrasonic as well. Okay. Or is it ultrasonic? Thank what was you, number you. seven? Some versions you sound uh, number seven is they store minerals for later use. Okay, thank you. Okay, and that's it. Very good. Gosh, I'm learning a lot in these three categories. Four categories. What are we at? Three? Three. Four? Four. four so far. Four. That's four. Yeah. It feels oh. like we've had 10 categories tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of learning going on here. Okay, so let's play with or something. Plasma treatment. Just, just enjoy the aurora yeah. going on behind you, Rob. Okay, so let's see what we got. We've had some really wide spreads here. So let's see, maybe Republicans who have a run on Band-Aids might know a lot about bones. We're, 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 uh, we lost Vincent, so therefore we got our lowest score. Well, it matched our other lowest score. We got a one again. Oh, oh Donald Duck. We need to double figures, Rob. Donald Duck? Um, thanks to the ultrasound uh, on the last one, we made it up to three. <laughs> I like it when these are difficult. Okay, honey, wake up. Three. Or did you say eight or three? Three. <laughs> okay. I uh, wish I said eight. Sad. Sad. Did somebody count? Oh, yeah, six. Sorry. Because wow. I thought we were going to be last because we were Rivera's team. But... Oh, no maxi pads on our ears. Seven. Ooh. Jeez. Oh. Okay. So we have a bonus left. Kevin. Okay. I told you the category last week. I hope you studied. Oh. Nope. <laughs> it's kind of a two pot. I'm going to do five questions of one cat, one pot. And then the last five are going to be mono rules. <gasps> so the first five is 
from 1971 to 2001, Billy Joel released 14 studio albums. For the first first five questions, just name any five of those albums. And for the set, set question six through ten, name any Billy Joel song, Mono Rules. Okay. Can they be the same? No, it's Mono Rules. Mono Rules. You I know, but one through five. Album, those albums. Albums and oh, albums. songs. Hold on, I'm going to post the thing in the chat. Mm. Where's the chat? Mm. But some of the songs may be the same name of the album. I don't know. Don't don't say nothing. That's it. Go to your rooms. Well, it's fast. Oh, fine. Oh Lord. Right. Oh, good. Susan's here. Susan knows all the Billy Joel by now, don't you? <laughs> okay. So, what was the what was the first part of the question? I heard Any the Oh, hey, oh, here it five is. Five albums. We went to the. Any five albums? No idea. There's got to be one called Piano Man, doesn't there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, put that down. Uh, I can only think of four. Albums because I'm not real good on albums. It's better than Man, an innocent man, Stormfront, and River of Dreams. Sounds good. I'm amazed. That's four more than I would have gotten. Exactly. And you've got a migraine. <laughs> what about the best of Billy Joel, just as a sort oh, of yeah. generic? How about a Christmas special? Uh, I don't know if he had the best of. He hasn't done his best work yet, huh? Um, I mean, those don't yeah, count. These, are, these are studio oh, albums, not greatest hits co compilations. Okay. Studio albums. Because he has greatest hits volumes one and two, which is one of the biggest selling albums in history, and greatest hits volume three. Uh huh. So don't say he doesn't have it. It's it's like sold almost fifty million copies. But we can't use those. But we can't use those. You can't okay. use those. Volume one and two, three. You know. So. For the for the songs, and I know we still need an album, but so there's Piano Man, right? Obviously. But that's going to be what everybody says. Mono I think we should all pick that because okay. they're all going to go for something obscure. Mono rules are weird. Well, do we know any other ones? Oh, no. Well, we know the songs. He did. He did. <laughs> wasn't it? So a, it wind, was the song. The wind. Something in your wind. I love you just the way you are. Just the way you are. He said to his first wife. Um, <laughs> did you do the Blonde Over girl? Blue is kind of an obscure one. Who? Blonde Over Blue. Blonde Over Blue. I like it. Um. Oh, God, he had so many big hits. I don't remember any of them. What's the one he did with um, for... Um... The princess Diana, um, candle in the wind, right? That was not him. Oh, oh so that was Elton John. Oh, I get him confused. I <laughs> guess. <clears throat> oh, he has oh these big giant hits. You know, I did my punishment when I went and looked up you know, the whole thing and I listened to them music and Yeah, you, you should know, know all these. I calmed myself down, but honestly, I didn't like any of it, so <laughs> it didn't stick. <laughs> I don't remember any of it. I remember when you did this, Jerry. I felt so Why? bad. The Billy Joel. Why? Because she was Ellen making fun of done. um it he was making she was making fun of Kevin always picking Billy Joel and she says she felt guilty about it so she went and listened to a whole bunch of it. <laughs> I remember I that. Research. It was so funny. I tried to apologize, but I'm not I, I take I take the apology back now. Oh. <laughs> Damn this. Damn this category. <laughs> so many songs to choose from. Just pick five. I don't care. Yeah, um, we just need to pick five. Wait, there's Allentown. no strategy on this. Allentown. Um, oh, yeah, Allentown. Six you know, shots. when you say them, I remember Pressure. them. <laughs> my life. What was the last one? My life? My life. 
the theme song to Bosom Buddy. Oh, yeah. Another show I didn't watch. So we Tom have Hanks four Peter albums. And the, the albums, we don't need to worry about model roles. So we have right. Piano Man, River of Dreams, Innocent Man, and Something I Can't Read. Stormfront. Stormfront. <laughs> it says Storm Rome. All right. Do, can we think of another album? Are you sure like, you didn't have a Christmas special? <laughs> well, he says it has to be a studio album. So not even a live album or anything. Oh, not live. Because no it could have gone with Billy Joel Hall or anything like that. Billy Joel at the at Budapest. No, that would be <laughs> that would be a studio. Um <laughs> yeah well we got four and we can't win so right <laughs> let's not rack our brains i think we should bar. make bonus categories where there's negatives that you can go into negatives oh, that's a great idea i don't know how to do it though but i think it'd be really fun. how'd you sell that so the now? team that's that always be been hard. winning all along would end up getting a negative numbers uh-huh. Yeah. So uh -huh. cruel, Susan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With her evil laugh. I don't know how to do it, but it's got to be a way of doing it. Um, so, so far we have the Billy Joel songs with the Mano rules. Piano Man, Innocent Man, Just the Way You Are, Blonde Over Blue, Allentown, and My Life, which is one, two, three, four, five. five. That's six. That's oh, I think you did five. We got, well, we got four albums and six songs. Do we want to throw one of those songs out? And if we do, which one? Could it be Piano Man because it's too obvious? Or do we want to do the obvious one because everybody else is going to throw I it out? I think we should leave it in. Oh. Uh, I I toss it out. But. Yeah, you're cautious, but I would leave it in. No, I'm not cautious. It's just that I think people will have a hard time coming up with more songs. Well, come on, most people know these. We got Karen. Karen's going to have these. Like Karen, Karen is an anomaly. She knows yeah. a lot about the music. Every other team right now is arguing whether or not to have Piano Man in there. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm looking okay, and and Faith is gonna know all these also. I mean, we can come also. up with a bunch more songs, but we're just gonna be banging our heads against the wall trying to the so Brandy and Faith will have this. Rob knows a lot of this stuff. Oh, he does, huh? Um, I think so. I don't know if Gail Lee or Leonard would be No, they wouldn't they wouldn't be up there on my <laughs> list of people who know Billy Joel. Or Janine. <laughs> Yeah, but Karen's Janine's like that scene with Janine, Ron, right, so. Janine, Jamie. So I'm sure they got it. So they would know obscure stuff, is what I'm trying to say. And they're going to come up with five obscure stuff. So the obscure, the better, huh? I think they will. <clears throat> In which case we should throw out Piano Man. You can, I mean, if you really want. Yeah, I think so. And if we can come up with some other like one that's that something well, we else that I've never heard we have of. Five. Yeah, okay, we, so we, we have five. Take out Piano Man. Anyway. We've got five. Yeah, we have oh, to well, trim then, it. Oh, then Piano then Man is probably, the most obvious. Yeah. Unless, Unless it'll be really you are still, is more obvious. Yeah. But it'll be really funny if we if we get back in the room and then nobody picks piano man. <laughs> that has happened. I know. Yeah, was <laughs> wasn't we didn't win for Psychon and nobody picked Milder Grass Tyson and Yeah. <laughs> oh no, that's obvious. Nobody would know. Yes, that. Yeah. It's going to take a long time to score this because name any Billy Joel song. Mm, and there's like a thousand five. of them. <clears throat> um, okay. Team, do we want to throw out Piano Man or just yeah. the way you are? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's throw out Piano Man. Go ahead. Piano Man is out. 
Okay. So okay, now so we have what are the five man. we've got then? We have Innocent Man, Just the Way You Are, Blonde Over Blue, Allentown, and My Life. Orcs. I hate mono rules. I love them. I despise I, mono rules. I love them because it just really mixes things up. Well, I mean, it's not trivia anymore. It's just mind, mind strategy. It's strategy, yeah. I it's like strategy. strategies. Nobody ever wants to play strategy games with me. So this is why I have to be able to do mono rules. Once it also time. takes so much longer. No, no. Yeah, it no, does. No, no, I don't agree. <laughs> yeah, but you're entitled <laughs> to your wrong opinion, Susan. But That's true. Hey, your true. wrong opinion. That's you can true. unagree all, all you want, but <laughs> <laughs> someday we'll time them. Yeah. Oh, Robin's going to be gone a lot now because her dog is doing Toto, playing Toto. Oh, that's right. Her dog is playing Toto? Yeah, it's yep. like it's third, her, her Petunia, it's like her third time. Time being she's, Toto. She's old now. I'm surprised she can still do it, frankly. Yeah, I know, right? Well, the dog's she's a train. Over 13. Get she doesn't have to do very much, though, I don't think. Right. Just it's better than she's Ride around on a bicycle. She doesn't have to just, memorize any lines. She doesn't have to run. <laughs> she just has to run across the stage a couple of times, I think. And Basically, has to help. behave and follow order. Yeah. yeah, she has to not bite anybody and poop on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> that make it much more interesting. My dog could not be counted upon for either of those things. <laughs> no. Well, your dog would just leave town if you let him loose out there early. Anyway. He would have to. Be. George would be like, "I'm out of here. When are we going to Kansas? I want to. Can I eat those little people? <laughs> I'm Barking at the little people. I'm going to play with the munchkins." <laughs> <laughs> I want to play with the munchkins. Okay, so we're done, right? Is there something? Yes, so. Huh? Unless we can think of another album name, we only have four album names: Piano Man, River of Dreams, Innocent Man, and Stormfront. <clears throat> I do not have a Billy Joel album to my name. How about? Oh, Stormfront River of Dreams. Joel Man. On cassette. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Not on an LP. Jolie. Jolie. Jo, jo, Jolene. Jo, Josie. How about rapping with Joe? Billy. Billy, Billy. Billy the Gene. <laughs> That's an album name. Didn't he do a song about New York? <laughs> Billy Jean in New York. He may have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Billy Joel in jeans. Jeannie. Jeannie. Ba -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> what have you been drinking, Susan? <laughs> <laughs> Jolie, Jean, Jean. Diet Dr. Pepper, the usual. <laughs> I haven't even had that much. I had, I think, one <clears throat> can today. Um, I still have a can of my fridge from the last time for me. Over here. Oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I hate that come stuff. back. And I have her thing for her. Yeah, I have something for you. Get it out of here. <laughs> People look at my fridge and think, what are you drinking? You say that is, that's for Susan. She may come back. Susan's Someday. Diet Dr. Pepper. She said she'll be back. She'll be back for her DDP. Yeah, I think I have some artificial sweetener in my cupboard, mm -hmm. probably from because <laughs> we don't use it. Yeah. That's funny. We don't use real sugar for anything. Uh, Deborah, when you, you know go on your cruise birds? again? Uh we're leaving the 30th of, of July. Oh wow, you're going soon. It's pretty soon. Yeah, she's got to get going oh. so she can be back early. <laughs> she's got other things to do. I do have other things to do. But all Wear in good time. compression socks, Deborah. Put those socks <laughs> on. I, I bought some. They're oh, ugly, good. but I bought some. Uh, I'm not so worried about them being ugly, though, as them being hot. Hot and uncomfortable, yeah. I'm going to probably take them off in Amsterdam. Oh yeah, just wear them for the plane. The plane is the best, the most important. Well, the first, the first part of the plane, because there's San Francisco to Amsterdam is the long thing, and then Amsterdam to Athens. I probably don't need them for that. So. Oh, you're starting in Athens. Cool. 
Yeah. It's going to be a bazillion degrees there, though. Oh, it's going to be like, it, was, it was 109 yesterday, and they closed the Acropolis. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it'll cool down a lot in two weeks. Yeah. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go check cool. real quick. 109. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to see the Acropolis at night, and even then it'll be hot. Yeah, I, I, the, I, the trick apparently is to spend the day in the museum and uh -huh. drink lots of cold things and get all cold, and then try to get the seven o'clock ticket. Mm. It's it's only really open until eight, but they don't really kick you out right away. So. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. If, I, I don't know if, it, if that's going to work. We'll see. <laughs> we may look at it from the bottom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> look, it's amazing. It's, look at that. <laughs> so you guys got all the answers? Oh, so yeah. We do. Sure. Excellent. We, I think we could only come up with four album titles. So. I told everybody last week what we were doing. No, I wasn't here. <laughs> I didn't hear that. I don't know. I said uh, I was inspired by Cat's um, category of uh, of um, movies that um, I forgot the guy's name. She'd be mad if I didn't say Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves, yeah. Oh and yeah, I, her favorite. Um, so don't. Uh, I'll do something. Someone said Billy Joel. I said yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like a good idea. But I decided just doing the songs would be mono rules might be tough and just to get someone some albums that, you know, five is not a bad number. I almost did just, he had 14 albums, name them. Get Name 14 different albums and every point you get, I'll give you a Ooh. point. But I don't think anybody would get all, would get 10. I think that was a good, a good supposition. Yeah, I didn't yeah. want to make it two because it's like, how many would you guys got? Four or five? Uh, we, we only got four albums. So. Right. That's when you would have got four points. Yeah, I was thinking it was too tough to name name 10 out of 14. The model rules is going to be interesting. But I have I have albums from people that I actually, you know, paid more attention to than Billy Joel and I don't couldn't name all those albums even. Yeah, the thing <laughs> oh, with really? Billy Joel is Billy yeah. Joel started off in New York and he was really really big in the New York area local and then when he got he didn't get famous nationwide until he was on Saturday Night Live. So it took like seven to 10 years before he got famous when he was really well known on the East Coast and got famous in Philadelphia and New York. And then uh, I didn't really start listening until he was on Saturday Night Live, hmm. 1978. But he came, he had a hit with Piano Man in 73. And he was almost a one hit wonder. Oh, interesting. Yeah, the he fifth could have album. Had a completely different life. Okay, so this should be interesting. So uh, let's do the first part first. Yep. And um, then we're going to go to mono rules. So, Kevin, how do you want to do the first part? I'm going to give just all the album names. Okay. Okay, Cold Spring Harbor. P these are in order. Piano Man, Street Life Serenade, Turnstiles. Then he got famous with The Stranger, one of the biggest selling albums of all time. 52nd Street. Glass Houses, Songs in the Attic, The Nylon Curtain, Innocent Man, The Bridge, Stormfront, River of Dreams. And the last one is uh, um, <clears throat> Hello? He's probably oh, froze. Wow, he's, he's just held he's frozen. Person. We'll never know the answer now. Kevin, yeah. come back. Kevin, oh. don't go to the light. Uh, it's oh. frozen. <laughs> Somebody unplug Kevin and plug him back in. I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. Did okay. I got the, the fourteen albums in the in the chat. Right. right. And is Everybody there a reason through. you didn't include the one that came out this year? That's not an album. It's a single. It's a single. Okay. And, He's and a studio album. So, for, for, the, for the for the record, I don't think you read out loud before you froze number fourteen. Fantasies and Delusions, which is a, um, a classical album where he wrote all these big, like, Bach-like stuff and just no no words. And he had an, another guy perform it, a guy named Richard Jew, J-O-O. -O. 
who's a better pianist than he is. So Billy's not actually oh. pian- performing on it. He just wrote all this really good classical stuff. And it was highly rated when it came out, but not a popular album. And he hasn't written anything since, uh, since 93. Any, any, any pop album since 93 came up with one song, uh, the night of the Grammys that was on, uh, turn the lights back on. Hmm. That's the only song he's come out with since 93. Okay. So now mono rules, let's have one representative from each group. Do you guys know who your representative is going to be? And everybody else keep your mouth shut. (laughs) Makes it much easier. We get through this a lot faster. So yep. I want the I want the representative from Republicans cause a run on band aids. Now, so you're going to give you're going to read your five, and then Kevin's going to say if that's real or not, and then then other teams can weigh in on if they had or not. So let Kevin say it first. So go ahead. Who's the representative for Republicans get a run on band aids? Okay. Shall Shall I do this since I had the list? Yeah. Yeah. If you have the list. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Rob. Only only the good die young. Real song. Yep. Anybody else have it? Gail? Yes. Okay, it's off. Piano Man. Real song. Yes. Oh. Up, Uptown Girl. Yes. We did. Yes. Kevin's got to say that. It's a real song. Bill, real Bill song. Ramiro's reading off the list. Okay. Yeah. S- scenes from an Italian restaurant. It's a real song. And we have it. Oh. And we didn't start the fire. Real song. Woohoo! Third one point of the night. So that's how many points? <laughs> We've doubled our score. <laughs> no, we actually got Piano Man as an album, so we got two points. Oh, that's right. Okay. So do, how about the beginning? Do, how many points do you get in this round? We got two total. Even from the beginning? Yeah. You, you only got, got one album. Susan, don't point shame them. <laughs> <laughs> <Point> <laughs> shame. Susan. I'll make oh, you guys Billy Joel fans eventually. Okay. He's a north. He's a northeast East Coast phenomenon until <laughs> 1978 when it finally spread across the country. So California was a bit slow, and he failed out in California in the early 70s. Okay, so for the Donald Dump, Donald Duck team, who's the representative? That's me. Okay. All right. Read them off, Ron. What's left? Okay, Vienna. Real song. You got it. Uh, My favorite. Allentown. Song. Real song. We have it. And The Entertainer. Real song. And a real point. How many points? Yay! And Ron, Lo- and Ron Good loves going, that song. Ron. Six. Oh, wow. You nice high on the that albums. One, okay. Yeah, we got five on the albums and one left over. Okay, team five. Honey, wake up. Is it okay if I read, guys? Yes, please. Okay, we have Innocent Man. Real song and an album cover. And an album. Song and an album. Just the Way You Are. Real song. Blonde Over Blue. Ooh, good one. Real song. Thank you, Carl. Written about Crystal Christy Brinkley. Yep. And My Life. We got it. Also a good song and also a real song. Okay, how many is that, Peggy? We got three and four on top, so we have a total of seven. I mean, great. Job <laughs> for my team. Who's a representative for one inch? My, I guess me. Uh-huh. Uh, we had only two more. She's always a what, woman. Real song. What what team is this supposed to be, Susan? The sad one. Yeah, that's oh, not, not us. That, I'm, I'm not the sad one. I'm team two. Oh, sad one. We're the sad one. Three, one is uh, yeah. The one inch is sad. Okay. Um, Down Eastern Alexa. Real song. Okay. Real. Song. Leningrad. Leningrad, real song. Okay. Uh, she's got away. Real song. Okay, so we got seven. All right, so maxi pads. Um, we had only two more that haven't been na- named. She's always a woman. Real song. And turn the lights back on. Real song, the latest one. So that gives us five. 
Okay, here we. How did you guys like the mixed mono rules? It's fine. Yeah, I like mono rules, <laughs> so you I'm gonna always say it's fine. Yeah. Good. Here we go. One point difference between these two here. Oh. Wow. Good job, teams. Mm. Poor job. Poor. poor Made team. it by this much. Mm. Look at this, you guys. That's really sad. <laughs> Don't point shame. Yeah, no, no shame. No, point Su shame. Susan makes the teams and decides who goes on them, and then she shames the team that did that. Well, now, 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 Susan. And she was you, on that team. Don't happiest. forget. How many you did you score on your round, Susan? <laughs> Susan, you wanted the low scores, and you, we gave it to you. So don't, so don't whine about it. <laughs> she was on that team. She was hey, on the team. score, the score of four, the height of the the was round, your round was the round I was on. Good so. for you, Susan. This <laughs> this was the week you can really we're doing in. golf rules. <laughs> hey, Kevin, yeah. I sent you the link to the. Uh, the program for the Madison Square Garden show that I was telling you about, where yeah. he played with Dire Straits. Oh, cool! Um, oh, eighty-five. Breaking, breaking That's news: good. Trump accepts the GOP presidential that nomination. Oh, oh wow! Is that no? I'm surprised. Oh, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm I will shocked. not be watching it. I am not watching any of it. So it's been wonderful. Nope. Not yeah. I thought either. I was watching the Republican National Convention on TV. It turns out I was watching the season finale of The Boys. <laughs> the the spoilers, Carl. I haven't seen this season yet. <laughs> all right, everybody. I need to get out and go. Say good night, Gracie. It's great seeing you all. Um, I will see you next week. I think. See you Thank tomorrow, you. Deborah. See you might Sunday, Peggy. Yep. I might not. So Rob's got all tomorrow. the categories. See some people on yeah. the skeptics uh, in the pub. Yeah, hopefully. Yes. Yep. Join us oh. one way or the other, or go to the yeah. conference. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Good night, right. everybody.